on my end. We Ooh, maybe, maybe, hold on. One second, you might be a little too audible. Here we go. And then I need to that should get, be better now. I need to get you onto on screen. Okay, there we go. We good? Yeah. Okay. Time Except for. That... Okay, there we go. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello, Anwi. Hey, yeah, I have wigglies today. Yeah. I added them to, someone made one for me, and then I added it to my uh, waiting screen. I got five of them. Five wiggly. It's like a whole army. Yeah. So, I cannot remember where we left off, and I don't think Eggie can either. <laughs> we were talking about this before we started, and we're like, do you remember anything that happened, like, story-wise? Because we can definitely both remember stuff we talked about, but, like... Story-wise, what was going on? I think we just skipped all the story. We forgore. It's we forgore. Just be, just because like we were going through the part that has all the exposition. Mm. Oh yeah, because I remember it was also too. It wasn't just exposition, but it was like stuff we had seen before. Yeah, yeah. It, it was all just that same repetitive stuff at the start of every route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. We forgore. And, God, yeah, right, this room. Ah, uh, yes, we left off with the <laughs> awkward incredibly camera angle. Incredibly jank, uh, turning. <laughs> Hopefully today we remember. Okay. So we got a gotcha pot and pod. Cool. Two of them. Cool. I thought this was, I thought this was coffee. Huh. Seed. Okay, so... Seed. Gotta make sure we have all our seeds. Mm. Oh, wait! Is this the science classroom? Uh, why are we going to need to dissect a frog? Presumably there's something inside of it. Cause you know when you, when you want to like, yeah, you you gotta did you, you gotta hide stuff inside a frog. Did you ever dissect a frog in high school? Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Um, only once. Wild. It doesn't seem. It seems like a. It's like a kind of a high budget thing though, so it's not really something you do multiple times unless there's a point. Yeah, it's just like it's such a trope, and like my school never did that. I don't know. I think you have to buy the dead frogs. That's the thing. And it might be like a budget thing or it might just be like harder to find in some parts. Yeah, than we others. did cow eyeballs. Huh? We that's how somehow that's worse. I think that's worse somehow. I yeah. don't think that's better. <laughs> like I remember very little about that day except for the fact that there was one girl who accidentally who like pressed the knife in wrong and got how eyeball fluid in her mouth. Uh, see, okay, here's the thing. With the dead frogs that we had, they were dead, but they weren't, like, freshly dead. Which sounds bad, but, like, there's a point. Um, mm -hmm. They're kind of, like, when they die, um, they take the frogs and they, like, put some kind of, like, fatty substance or, like, wax kind of stuff in the veins. Mm -hmm. um, partly that. so that, like, they don't start, like, you know, rotting away when they are in shipment, but also so that when you cut them open, you aren't getting, like, frog blood all over you. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so when you're cutting them open, like, you're seeing the insides, but you're not getting, like, frog blood. <laughs> yeah. It's not exploding all over you. It'd be very difficult to make a dead frog with that kind of treatment on it explode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's just, like, that's just, like, a weird thing for schools to do, I think. <laughs> like, there is just the day that you come to class and rip apart a dead thing. Yeah. I think for ours, we had, like, a specific assignment to go with it. So it was like, here's how to cut open the frog, but then here's how, like, what to look for inside the frog. So it was basically just, like, you know, identify the intestines, identify the, uh, this and that. Um, the problem is all we found was fat in our frog. <laughs> I think my group just had, like, a really chubby frog or something, because literally we're, like, pulling apart, we're like, ooh, is this an intestine? It's like, nope, that's just another piece of fat. It's like, what about, 
this? Is this like the stomach? It's like, nope, that's more fat. <laughs> Uh, so, so I guess we're going to be relying on you to uh, dissect this thing. Okay. And we have more seeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of seeds. So many seeds. What the Maybe fuck these are the seeds this? they use for the garden. What the fuck is this puzzle? <laughs> Huh. Who would set up a laboratory like this? We've had that problem many times in this game. That like Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna check something. Um because uh I know I was using OBS today. I just need to check if my chat box is working because now that I've transferred over. Uh. Um I'm just gonna test. Okay, it's working, we're good. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what you're doing. Well, let's... Well, yeah, we'll come back to it. Uh, it's one of those things that seems to exist solely because it's expected. Like, I don't know what educational value it has that isn't already taught in class. Yeah, it feels like, like, dissections in science class are like... You, you see it on TV... And then you do it in class, it, like, when you get to actual high school, it, like, it happens, and it's like, oh, okay. And, but it's yeah. like... I don't know, it, it, it... Yeah, it's weird. Um, it's kind of a non-event. I don't mm. really know, because I think the idea is maybe to get, like, people used to the idea of doing dissections, because, like, I imagine if you go on to study, like, biology, you might be doing a bit more of that, but... Yeah, for everyone else, it's like, well, that that's a thing that happened, yeah, and like, it finished, what? and that's all there was to it. Uh-huh. I don't think anyone's out here, like, fondly looking back on the first time they cut open a frog. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, have you lost your, uh, frog virginity? <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> your dissection virginity. <laughs> what? Continue. Continue. I don't think I can. No. <laughs> that 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 is a truly wretched set of words. Congratulations. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But, uh... I think the capsules are for something else. Uh-huh. I think the seeds are for a puzzle, but I can't remember which one. Mm-hmm. What's this thing? We can't click that. I guess it's probably tied to this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where we get the answers, I think, because the screens are lit up. I yeah, and there's two of them. Yeah, and I don't see where else we would get it from. <laughs> the virgin frog and the chadpoles. <laughs> chadpoles. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of, like... Th there are a lot of, like, tropes about high school in media. And I have no idea how, like... It feels like a lot of them just weren't a thing when I was going to high school. Yeah, I mean, examples? Because I know I can think of a lot as well. The flower baby thing. The what? A, a, like, a, a thing that I have seen in, like, multiple, like, sitcom type things where it's like, person in high school has to take care of a, a, a bag of flour that's representative of a baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's more... We did have something like that at my school. I never did it. Mm -hmm. um, it was only for certain classes. Like, they had a class of, like, home economics. But the thing is, is that home economics was an elective. So most people didn't end up actually taking that class. The home, the but the I home believe... ex class at my school mm -hmm. was just a cooking class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know um, one school I went to actually had, like, a whole home ec... Like, there's a whole home ec department. Like, you could take home ec in, like, 
the first year there but then after that you could take like individual classes on like sewing on cooking on like nutrition or like i think they had one on like parenting so there was like a home ec department mm -hmm. and i think if you would take the parenting class and yeah you would have to do that like flower baby type thing mm -hmm. on the other hand i suppose a flat like a bag of flour probably resembles a human baby more than an egg, which is the other one I've heard of in movies of like uh, having to take care of an the egg. egg thing, yeah. Yeah. And I imagine it's also about weight. Yeah, yeah, you gotta uh, actually like carry it around. Uh huh. An Wait. egg does not weigh very much. Mm hmm. But this is kind of like. That's just such a weird. Like, I get why it's like a sitcom trope. But it's such, like, a weird thing to be in- to have in high school. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, a lot of things revolving around football and cheerleading kind of don't apply when your school does not really have teams for either of those things. Yeah, I think my school had a- had a, uh, football team, but they sucked. <laughs> the problem is- the problem is that, like, nearby there was just, like, uh, 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 there was a school, it was a private school, um, that just, like, all of their sports teams were, like, top, top tier. Um, mm -hmm. so it's like, if you're in, if you're a school in the area, you're not gonna bother trying to be, um, to, to, to be a good sports school, because any of the kids who are, like, go, who are going to be on a sports team, and, like, that's something that they're, like, going through life focusing on, they're going to that other school. Um, mm. And also, you're gonna have to play against that school. Yeah, and yeah. You're gonna, so it's kind of like, no one really tried. <laughs> but, Are you guys talking about soccer or yeehaw American football? Um, listen to our accents and guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean... The school I went to for my first year of high school did have a football team that was like, you know, I guess mid-tier, like they weren't winning anything, but they weren't like losing all their games either. And they did have a cheerleading team, but then the school I moved to after uh, had neither of those things. It was like a rugby team, mm -hmm. but we had no cheerleaders. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I can't think of like a single like sports team at my school that like anyone actually cared about. Model UN. Model UN. Does that count? <laughs> I mean, I think my school had Model UN. In this dream, football is known by its proper name of Hand Egg. Of course, Hand <laughs> Egg. But yeah, no, um... Be careful when you handle the egg. Because, like, my, my, my school, uh, my high school had an international relations class that kind of sucked, but, like, was also, like, better than, than not getting that class in most cases. And it's like a lot of the kids in that were in Model UN, so. Yeah, I think my school had something like that. I didn't participate in it, but I think I knew some people who were kind of into that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, was, that kind of thing. There, there was a uh, band. Um, I don't know if the band actually ever did much, but <laughs> there was... There was this one kid in my English class who was in band, on the football team, and, like, just, like, the weirdest combination of traits. Is do all the extracurriculars. He, he, like, Yeehaw, foot kick, yeah. He was, he was the only other person in the class, besides me, who had a um, custom-built computer that he built himself. Wow. Yeah. You know, I think that's the other thing high school movies seem to get wrong, is they assume that everybody is exactly one kind of person. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, here are the sports guys, and here are, like, the band kids, and here are the theater kids, and, like, here are the science dudes. And it's like, in real life, mostly everybody does everything. Like, obviously there'll be some more crossover with some categories and others. Like, the theater kids and the band kids were largely, like, one circle. Um, mm -hmm. But... You know, among everybody else, like, you had people that did, like, you know, God, painting I, and also rugby, like... I tried There was join, crossover. I tried to join the, the theater class at my high school. Um, that, that was in senior year after... 
I think that was the third class I took in that time slot because teachers kept kicking me out. I didn't stay in the class, but the teacher actually really liked me. Um, but she was, like, she didn't do a good enough job at restraining the class. Mm. And so, like, I I wouldn't say I was getting bullied, just people were being shitty. Yeah. Um, so I dropped it after people uh, were super anti-Semitic to me. Oof. I don't know, I think... I, I don't know. Like, I don't even know how they knew I was Jewish because that's not a thing I <laughs> talked about at the time. <laughs> they just threw out some insults and they're like, "Well, one of these is bound to land." Yeah, like, no, it wasn't even that. It was just like, I, I'm not going to repeat it because it actually makes me uncomfortable. But it was just like, what the? F these are high. S they they were a year younger than me too. It's just like, what the fuck? Where are you children learning these things? <laughs> And, yeah, and, and so I dropped the theater class, which was a shame, because I had fun with it. Just, the other students were putrid. Yeah, I think the thing with theater classes, too, is, because I know you mentioned you did it in your last year. In my experience, um, grade, like, first year high school theater class is terrible, and it gets better as you go along, because usually people who are only taking it for the arts credit will do one year of it and then be done. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to, like, the higher grades, they've more or less, you know, anybody who wants to not do this has already kind of fallen off of it, you my, know? My, so, my school had a film class. And so if you wanted yeah. easy credits, you took the film class. Yeah, yeah, my school had comp sci, which is like, yeah, computer science, which didn't really teach you anything but programming, but we learned a lot of, like, yeah. photography no, uh, and film stuff. Class. It was, it wasn't making films, it was watching films. Oh, like a media analysis kind of thing. Yeah, like, we would, basically it would be, come to class, watch a movie. Maybe, like, classes were, I think, like, hour and a half. At, at this school, so like sometimes we would finish a movie within one class period, sometimes we, it would be split across two days, um, and then when we were done we would talk about it. Mm. Yeah, I never but took- I know my school had a class like that too. I took that two years in a row, because that teacher was kind of awful, but he was also kind of great. <laughs> um, and it was just- it like, I'm a film nerd, I- had fun just coming to class and watching films. Um, like, kind of basic bitch pics a lot of the time. <laughs> but, like, it's, you know, it's not supposed to be, like, something super deep. It's basically introduction to film. Yeah. Um, and, but the thing is, the second time I took it, um, so the first time I took it, I was the only person I knew in the class, but the second time I had a bunch of friends in the class. Um, so that that was fun, because we could talk during the movies. <laughs> uh, but also that was, in, in like, towards the end of, or like really start, towards the start of the second semester, um, the teacher had the idea of, I shouldn't just be showing these students movies, we should be learning how to make them. At the start of the second semester. <laughs> it's like... Wait, so like... This becomes like a class on how to use cameras and stuff, like... Halfway through the year. Oof. And... And we still had, like, the lesson plan for watching movies and stuff already set out. So we also had to do that, so it was only like half the time that we were able to do this. Mm-hmm. And in the end, it was, like, what he, 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 it was basically this teacher, like, realizing that his idea was not going to work and just constantly compromising. <laughs> yeah, was it, like, one of those things where it was, like, the first time you ran the class? Because I know I've definitely been in classes He'd like that. He'd been there where... for a while. Oh, yeah, because like, I know I've been, been in classes before like It that. was the second time I had taken that class with that teacher. So. Mm. But anyway, like, the, the the compromise in the end was, like, there was another school in the area that had, like, an actual, like, filming thing. And so we went over there and used their set uh, to, to film, like, some fake stuff. Like, one, per <laughs> one group did a cooking show. I think I was on the news team. Which is... God, okay. Tangent off that tangent... 
in middle school, I was in an actual film class. Wait, wait, so your middle school had, like, an actual one, but your high school didn't? Yes. <laughs> the, the, the film class was split up into two halves, um, which was, like, in, it, for the, for one half of the year, you would be on the morning broadcast team, which was, mm -hmm. you had to, once, like, you had to make ten, about, I think it was, like, five or ten minutes, um, that would air on Monday morning, uh, every week. And so we just had to, like, write and, you know, shoot and everything. Um, which was, like, a really fun class, actually, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then the other one was just more straightforward, make a movie. Mm. And that, like, I enjoyed that less, but that was mostly because, like, I got stuck with a group I didn't really get, get along with. Um, so it's yeah. like, they didn't want me to write. The, the script, I, I was the only time I was allowed to hold the camera was in the like, in the like last two weeks of filming. Oof. At which point I had not held the camera before, so I didn't know how to hold it. Oh. Uh... Um. So my. Okay, wait. Uh, <laughs> We've been sitting on this DNA extraction <laughs> screen for, like, ten minutes now. <laughs> but, yeah, so so in that, my whole thing was just being an actor, which was, eh. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I think... I think on. the thing is, like, having a bad group for a group project is especially terrible on, like, creative-type projects. Because I know I've definitely had my fair share in, like, drama class or music class of, like... Yeah, just group members that don't get along, but we have to get along. But, like when you have a performance in front of the class, like, it definitely shows when a group hated each other and when they didn't. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I think for, like, film that works slightly better because it's, like, the way the class would work is, like, th we would get lessons every, so every now and then for how to do stuff. But a lot of it was, like, okay, get in your groups. We're, st we're still in the filming section. You can mm -hmm. use the entire school film. And it's, so it's like, cool, we're gonna go to the gym. We're gonna be the only people in the gym at this time. And it's like, that that was kind of nice. Um, yeah, yeah, just like wandering free form around the school. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely preferred the, like, news part. Um, mm -hmm. God, I don't even know if I still have it, but for the, for a while, like, I... Each week we would, we would have, um... Behind the uh, anchors, we would have this poster for just, like, it would be basically, like, the title of the show and a graphic. And mm. one week, I got to draw it, and then I got to take it home, and I don't know if I still have it or not. <laughs> because I've moved yeah. several times, and that might have gotten thrown away, or it might have gotten... I left some stuff with family during one of my moves a bit ago, so it might be there. I hope I still have it. it. It was terrible, but it was cool. Nice memory. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think my school had anything like that. Like, as far as, like, a morning broadcast. Like, we had the announcements, but those usually weren't, like, they were usually handled by, like, student council or teachers. Mm -hmm. um, like, there wasn't, like, a class for it. Actually, funny story, um, usually it was handled by student council, but, like, if, you know, one of them, whoever was supposed to do it wasn't available that day, usually they get a teacher to do it and I remember there was one day where they had to announce something about because my school had an esports club and they needed huh. to announce that they were having a meeting that day but this teacher that was doing it just didn't know what esports were so he pronounced it as esports <laughs> and we're like the esports club the esports club so yeah, and then after that, once the student council people started taking over again, they just kept pronouncing it esports, <laughs> just just for the fun of it. Esports. Like, yeah, my my, my uh, I think my both my middle school and my high school had clubs. Like there was the Molly UN club, but I just wasn't ever a part of them. I was part of the Going Home Club. Yeah, I think my elementary school had like barely any extracurricular activities and the ones that they did have were literally just sports mm -hmm. um which i was not interested in 
But I know both of my high schools had a lot of extra extracurricular extracurricular mm -hmm. things. I tried like I tried several times throughout middle school and high school to start a uh, magic Magic the Gathering club, <laughs> and it flopped. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would don't... actually get people in there, and like we would be playing, and I would be teaching people, and it just kind of like people would learn and then be like, okay, I'm done showing up. Mm -hmm. And also, like, be being a kid, staying after school for that was always kind of rough. Yeah. I think for me, like, my school actually had a Pokemon club. Um, which basically just started as a few friends who all enjoyed playing Pokemon. And they're like, what if we just, like, made this official and then we can just get a room and play Pokemon against each other during lunch? Um, then it eventually warped into the Nintendo club because they realized they should... Like, because a lot of them also played, like, Smash or Split... Maybe not Splatoon. I don't think Splatoon was out yet at the time. But they played other Nintendo games. So it kind of warped into the Nintendo Club. And then it became the Esports Club after they're just like, Okay, this is just video games. It's video games. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, like... I guess, like, me and my friends were sort of a club. In that, like... We would all meet at the same place every day. Uh... Um... And just, like, hang out and have lunch. Which, like, there were, like, it wasn't just, like, two or three people. It was, like, there were, like, seven or eight of us in that group. Mm hmm But then, at that point, is it just, like, is that really a club, or is that just having friends? I mean, they weren't all my friends. Like, two of them were, like, my friends, and everyone else was the friends of my friends. Um. Yeah. I don't know, it, it definitely was, like, because, like, that's that group is also, like, who I kind of tried to do the, the card game club with. Mm -hmm. And, like, a few other people joined this group because of that, even after the card game club, like, didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I guess... I guess... Yeah. Uh, is that a club, or is it just having friends is the plot of Kaon? <laughs> Also, uh, Haganai. Yeah, I guess. I'm trying to think, though. I feel like that's a lot of anime, though. Mm -hmm. It's like, is this a club or is this just a group of friends? I don't know. I'm trying to think, too. Sometimes I wonder, too, if I talk too much about, like, the specific club that my school has, will somebody eventually just, like, watch long enough and pull the pieces together? Like, I'm always think wondering, I'm like... What if I'll be on the off chance that there's somebody who went to high school with me, like, in the chat, and they're like, hmm, and they're, like, putting the pieces together? Yeah, okay, if, if, on the off chance that anyone I went to high school with manages to find me offline, or online, I mean, that's already, like, worst case scenario. <laughs> but also, like, I don't know. I mean, actually, okay, <laughs> they, they might find me under non-VTuber stuff, because, um, I haven't changed my online handle since oh. middle school. But also, I don't think any of them particularly care to get in touch with me again, considering how things left off. Yeah, I don't know. For me, it's like... I don't know. It's fun if people find me on, like, the off chance, because I've definitely run into that before. Like, I've definitely been, like, scrolling through TikTok and had somebody just show up on my For You page, and I'm like, you look awfully familiar. But, yeah, I don't think anybody would find me, like, here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is that, like, well, actually, no, there would be people that find me here, but that's because I'm already in contact with them, so I don't think that counts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're gonna find me here because I told them to come here. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I don't know, because I know there's definitely been situations, like, I know I think I was saying on another stream a little while ago, um, there is, like, a fairly popular, like, VTuber on Twitch that I'm, like, 90% sure lives in the same city as me, and... This is mainly because every single time I get, like, a weather alert, there would be a, like, tweet shortly after it that seemed to match up perfectly with the weather alert. So it'd be, like, big storm for tonight. And then, like, a few minutes later, she'd just be like, might have to cancel stream tonight. Uh, there's supposed to be a storm. My power might go out. And then it's one thing if this happens, like, once or twice. But when this seems to happen, like, almost perfectly in sync with the weather notifications, it's like, mm hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And it's like, I'm not going to do anything with this information, but it's just kind of fun to think about. Mm -hmm. It's like, I could have seen them in public and not even known. Could have 
VTubers, they walk among us. <laughs> yeah, God, thinking back on high school is a lot, just because... <laughs> I don't actually think back on high school very much as a defense mechanism. <laughs> um, and there's a lot about high school that I just, like, kind of forget. Um, I don't know, I think I might be the one person on Earth who did have a fairly okay time in high school. Like. It wasn't- I don't think anybody has a perfect high school experience, but I enjoyed my time, I think. Mm-hmm. I can't- But then again, that feels like a weird thing to say because it's hard to say it without making it sound like you peaked early, like- Uh-huh. Um. Like, there are definitely aspects of my life that were better now than they were in high school, but like, there was pleasant things then, too. Mm -hmm. You know, like, my high school wasn't all bad, um, it's just, it wasn't, like, it was, it was a pretty bad time period, uh, in a lot of ways, just in terms of, like, my depression. Mm. But, like, I don't know, I had IRL friends then, <laughs> even if we weren't great friends, and even if I and stopped talking to them after graduation like you had them yeah like they were people i could like go see a movie with or like talk to or like hang out with and just vibe or like whatever yeah okay frog frog time yep it's frog time i think um oh wait, yeah oh scapel you know Remembering that the, uh, the, the, the fucking morning announcements club, though, is like... Was that where my middle school experience peaked? <laughs> that particular club? I think it might have been... Middle school was especially bad, just cause... That- I didn't have friends in middle school, and I had a lot of people bully me. I don't know, I feel like when people talk about middle school, it's always weird for me, because my like, my school was K to 8, like, it was kindergarten to grade. So, the idea of, like, middle school is very foreign to me because a lot of things people talk about middle school was very similar to what my life was like in high school, but also you were slightly younger, and it's like, I don't know, my grade 8 vibes were not that far off from my grade 5 vibes, because... It was the same, it was, well, first of all, it was the same class. Like, I was with the same people basically the whole way through. But, yeah, the idea of, like, being in a middle school where there are only people your age around you, and there are lots of them, and there are no, like, you know, small grade ones running around, like, mm -hmm. it is foreign. Yeah, uh, um, I don't know, like, the best I- the best for that is that, like, for my, my, my elementary school and middle school were, like, close by each other, because those were just within walking distance of, uh, my- of, uh, my house growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think- I don't know. I know my sister did get to go to middle school, but, yeah, it was like what you said. It was kind of the same situation where- the kid, like, the elementary school and the middle school, they actually shared a building. Like, they were two halves of the same building. Mm -hmm. um, but they, it's not like they would be interacting with each other much. Like, they would perfectly, like, they would plan the recesses so that, like, they wouldn't be running into each other. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was kind of the same situation. Yeah, whereas, like, they, they were, like, within walking distance of each other, but they weren't next to each other. Um, mm. it was a- I grew up in a small town, actually. <laughs> like, it was a- it was a town where there were a, there was a whole bunch of housing, because people need a place to live. But- I mean, that's how most housing works, I think. Yeah. But, as far as the actual, like, s town was concerned, you had Main Street, you had the, str the street next to Main Street, you had a mile-long road, and then on the other end of that road, you had, um, you you had like two, what's the word? 
a bunch of stores in an area. Plazas? No. Uh, strip malls? Strip mall, I guess, is like the closest sort of thing. It was like, that. there are some restaurants, uh, the Safeway <laughs> was there. <laughs> yeah, I think... But like, the thing is, like, you go 20 feet away from the Safeway, out of, and you're out of town. Because uh, this small town bordered um, a suburb. I guess the town was also a suburb, but it was like... I don't know. Yeah, I think... I don't know. Where I lived, it was like... It wasn't a small town. It was more like a small city. Like, we had a public transport system and everything. Like, it wasn't good, but we had one. Um, but, yeah, I guess maybe that's where the U.S. and Canada are different, though. Because I think in Canada, only the big cities typically have middle schools. Whereas uh, anything, you know, smaller than, like... I don't know, a certain size of city... Anything smaller will probably just blend your schools into K to eight. Wait. So the the screen being blue. What the fuck? We got it. <laughs> How? We win. How did I do this? I don't know what I. Don't did. question it. We win. <laughs> Winning. Ah. <laughs> Writing this down. But yeah, anyway, it was like, it was a very small town. Um. How do I remove the thing? But, uh, anyway, yeah, small town, and, I don't know, um, it, yeah, right, just everything was sort of close by because it was a small town, but also, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't, like, <laughs> geographically, it was a lot of ups and downs. What, like, in terms of mountains, or, like? Hills. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. There, there was a mountain nearby. Um, but it was like, this was sort of the foothills of that mountain. That yeah, was... no, I think, yeah, where I grew up was, like, very suburban, but it was suburban in the way that, like, I mean, I could walk to school, but that's because I live in elementary school, but that's because I live close to the school. It was very much like a car city, like, mm -hmm. you know, probably not going to do a lot of walking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're winning, don't question it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, something I've been realizing recently is like... Sometimes, do you ever feel like... You know when you're in like the kind of place that's like, kind of built for cars? Um, and like, everything's super far apart? I don't know, that feels like a fake city. I don't know... If the yeah. vibe... <laughs> and sometimes, yeah, it's like, I'll be riding in a car, or I'll be on a bus, and I'm like... I know I'm in a city, but this doesn't feel like a city. Like, like there would not there's be a bunch a, of stuff. There would not be a city a bunch of, here in this way if cars did not exist. Yeah, it's like there's a bunch of stuff that's relatively close together, but this doesn't feel like a city. Like this feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a threadbare city. Like you know when you have like fabric that's like very rubbed off, and you can just see like the threads and everything's like. It's like yeah, if wind blows, this is going straight through this. Like. Mm -hmm. Like city netting. Okay, so I guess we have to uh, solve this to get the third one, or get the fourth one. Mm -hmm. But, um. Wow, wow, wow. 
Hey, are you just guessing? Yes. Okay, that's true because I think that's also how I solved this one. <laughs> I have no idea what it is doing. Okay, so what are, what are our numbers at the bottom? 5, 3, 3, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3, 40, 80, 40. And which one are we trying to dispense? I don't know. <laughs> Is there like an instruction pamphlet in here or something? Uh, maybe? Part fluid temp. Okay. Uh. Oh, do we need to put the seeds in there? Maybe. We need to dilute it with water. Yeah, and it's talking about the seeds, though. It it like. Yeah. What is the purpose of the seed? Yeah. We raising birds in here. Okay. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to look at the numbers at the top because I feel like that's relevant. It it is relevant. I have no idea how because two of them are identical. Mm hmm. No, I'm just saying. Hold on. Forty. Twenty. These numbers are too big to do what I think they're going to do. Because you know how they said, like, if you put the lever in the middle, then it splits it in two, right? But then ah. those numbers are way too big, right? Mm -hmm. They're way too big. Even if you do, like, 40 split into 20 split into 10, you're still going to be getting way bigger numbers than what you need down there. Yeah, I have no idea what is supposed to be happening with this. Mm hmm are we desperate enough to look up answers? Maybe? Huh. Oh, wham, 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 wham. Eventually wham, I'll wham, get wham. this, right? I mean, once again, I, I can literally look this up for you. Yeah, go, feel free. And they um, feed me. Well, while you're doing that, so like, a thing that I see uh, talked about online, did your school have a swimming pool? No, but we were, okay, the first school I went to was in close enough proximity to one that they could walk there. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one did not and did not have one nearby. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my middle school had one. And at the time I uh, graduated high school, there were apparently there was like concrete plans to have one, but like I don't know if that ever happened. I mean, I don't. I was gonna up. say, what would you use it for? But like, obviously, the answer is what swimming. Do you, but what like, do you use a like field for? <laughs> Soccer, British football. <laughs> Just like, um, just like a variety of things. It, it it is a playing area. I mean, I guess. Okay, hold on. Uh, bum, 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 bum. okay. Um, what's the snake game again? Um, <laughs> virtue's last reward. Okay. Virtue's last reward. Vir virtue's. Yeah, I, I have no last idea what was going reward. on with my um high school when I graduated, but like. In the last year, year and a half, they built an entire new gym. Okay, sorry. To cut you off, um, where are we? A uh, laboratory, I believe. Laboratory, okay. Yeah, like, laboratory. My, my school built a whole new gym that was just like a second gym. We had that, after that point, we had two gyms. Um, there was also, uh, but there, there was also, like, talk about at building a swimming pool. But at the same time, the school was pretty shit. Like, 
They definitely could have been putting that money towards, like, making sure all of the bathrooms have functional doors. <laughs> oh no, what what happened to me? Sorry, no, that's not your fault. <laughs> um, it's fine, I just floated down into the corner for some reason. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, it's like, if, if you can afford to build a new gymnasium, you can afford to make sure that, like, bathroom stalls have doors at all. Someone just took the door and I guess left with it. Okay. Just a moment. Um, because, okay. Yeah. Did we put, did we collect any beakers? No. Because apparently I need to, we need to put some seeds into beakers. Or maybe the beakers are the things there. But then why can't we put the seeds in them? Yeah, huh. Because what we, basically what we need is a red capsule. That's what we're looking for. Um, so hold on. Uh, use a seed jar on the colorful beakers below the pipe puzzle after you solve it. How do you solve the pipe puzzle? Yeah, like I thought the that solution. We would have oh, <laughs> do you want to do you want to feel like a fool? Yeah. Do you want to feel like an absolute fool? Sure. Just point all the levers down. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have to use seeds on these. Yeah, we just have to figure out um, which seed goes in which thing. Do you want me to read out the answers, or...? I might be able to figure this out. Okay. I'll, I'll let no, you actually okay, play the video me, game. Okay, tell me. Oh, oh, wait, hold on, let me pull it up again. Um, so... Okay, A, beaker, okay, so red beaker is round seeds with half marked, okay. so I'm assuming that's one that's like, okay. Uh, um, yellow is long striped seeds, I think we got that. Yeah. Um, green is round unmarked seeds, we got it. Yep. Um, light blue is long unmarked seeds, okay, and then E is, yeah, dark blues, yeah, I think we got it. Cool! Cool and good. Yeah. We win. <laughs> and there we go. It's interesting that, th that this was significantly harder than, um, than the other solution, which was just put the thing in. Mm-hmm. What? Wait. <laughs> huh. Pieces. I don't remember this. I hate this screen. It looks broken. <laughs> yeah. It know? looks like, you know, when your computer's crashing and you have, like, two programs trying to close at once and, like, <laughs> both of them are, like, the windows are, like, half closed. Like, you can still see parts of it open. Uh-huh. That's what it looks like to me. Did you ever watch the film Gattaca? The... Sorry, what? Did you ever watch the film Gattaca? It does not ring a bell, no. Okay, it, that was a thing I remember watching in science class at some point. It's a- it's like- I remember it being a pretty alright movie. Um, but it was- it's definitely just like, it was just something the teacher put on to not have to teach for a day. <laughs> and then I just remembered it. Because sometimes Yeah, I don't that think- happens. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there was stuff like I watched- because I feel like everybody watched Build Nye the Science Guy at some point as a kid. Yeah. Um, I believe everybody... There's some things I think that were unique to French. Um, like, I know we had uh, Télé Français, which I believe has kind of become a meme in recent years. Um, it's If you've ever seen that um, pineapple puppet, 
Um, no. No, okay. Well, there was a character. All the characters were played by kids, except for a few of them, which were puppets. Uh, and one of them was this, like, weird-looking pineapple. And, like, it, I think it was also what contributed to the fact, like, its memification is just the fact that, like, because it was supposed to be for, like, kids learning French, the characters would talk very slowly and with very simple sentences. So, yeah, there was one particularly memorable sentence that was just, like, Je suis un anana. Which means, like, I am a pineapple. But, again, I think just the fact that you have a character who just is a pineapple, that's not a thing you see every day. Yeah, this sounds weird. Je suis un uh. anana. Um, but it's also, it's very much the kind of thing you watch as a kid, and then you think about it as an adult, you're like, was that real? And then you have to, like, ask everyone else you know, you're like, that was real, right? Mm-hmm. Um, also, oh, okay, so... Uh, are you familiar with the Justin Timberlake movie about time, money? Huh? So the, the, no. The, ba- back when Justin Timberlake was trying to become a movie star, there was this movie about how time is money, and like you're born with a certain amount of time, and when your time runs out, you die. But also, you need to use your time to pay for things. <laughs> And apparently it was directed by the director of Gattaca, which is surprising to me, because I would have called time plagiarism for, for a lot of what Gattaca does. Um, a lot of similar ideas. So I guess it being the same director makes sense. Like, Gattaca doesn't have the whole time thing, but also the time thing is really dumb. I looked up the pineapple puppet is evil. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it's particularly cursed. Anyway, I, I wonder if I can... Idea. This. Hold on. I want to see if I can find, maybe I can find like a URL for like a picture of this pineapple. I think every, me, everyone should see this anana. Uh, tere, tere pensée. That was entirely just doing things until I got a right answer. <laughs> um... Let me, let me let me link to the image. Oh my god, just let me copy the URL. Okay. Oh, I just floated into the corner again. Lovely. Um, allez, Francais. C'est où ma ma app to Twitch? Okay. Wait. Okay. So wait. 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 What? What the fuck is this thing for then? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a folder. I had the information with the other stuff. Remember? Yeah, but like the machine. I don't know, maybe it's a story thing. Maybe. I don't know, maybe only like Luna knows how to use it. Okay, yeah, I just sent, um... So yeah, that's a picture of the pineapple, if anybody's interested. Of the cursed pineapple. Send it on Discord. Hold on, yeah, I'll... Uh... Where is Discord? What, what, what does Discord look like? Here we go. Because this sounds... Okay, yeah, I just sent it to you. Ah, okay, uh... This is important enough that we're stopping the game to look at this pineapple. Yeah. Uh... (laughs) Ah, um... I can, I can definitely see that feeling like a childhood fever dream. Yeah, see, this is, this is the, that picture is the very vibe of learning French as a child in school. Uh Uh-huh. But that's the thing, though. I feel like the pineapple is the only thing anybody remembers about this show, because the only other thing I remember about it was I think it was an episode where one character has to run a marathon and like there was a whole thing about like not giving up. Uh, and I remember there was this other episode about a character moving to Paris because I definitely remember like one of the kids like very slowly being like, Je déménage à Paris. But I don't remember anything else about the show other than Je suis un anana. Like the pineapple is the only memorable part. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, why are kids' shows so weird? Because it's like, 
there is a whole, like, archetype of shows like this that's just, like, you think back on it and it feels like a fever dream. I don't know. I think that's right now. It's because... Maybe it's just the puppet, the puppetry era. Yeah, uh, pu puppetry and animation. Yeah, well, no, because I feel like puppetry specifically, because it was like an era of like, you know, puppetry is mainly kids things. Like, you know, you had like Sesame Street and Muppets and stuff. Then I feel like people started taking that and being like, haha, what if we took this thing usually for children and made it edgy? Yeah. Until the edgy stuff went and like kind of took over everything else. Cause like, I mean, Sesame Street and the Muppets still exist, but like, they're kind of just mainstay. Everything else is kind of just, mm -hmm. haha, edgy, edgy puppets. That, that that was just uh interesting one for me. Um anyway. Yeah, I, I guess I know what you're talking about. I don't have much memory of like what I watched as a kid. I think because I didn't watch stuff as a kid. Cause like yeah, I think my my first mom, uh I don't think we even had cable. I think she just didn't like me watching television. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of stuff I watched as a kid, because I definitely remember, um, I mean, I did watch some of, like, the basic kid stuff, like, you know, Dora and stuff, um, Blue's Clues. I watched, there was another one called Between the Lions, um, and that was, like, it was, like, this, like, puppet-slash-animation show about a bunch of yeah, lions I, I who live in a library. About. Yeah, um, I remember watching that as a little kid, um, I think as I got older, there was, like, Backyard Again, um... Yeah, like, I... I don't have a single recollection of watching TV before the age of six. Because until the age of six, I lived in a household that didn't have cable. Mm. So, it's just kind of like, that just... For, for I guess, that... The, 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 the period of time where, like, the sort of, like, surreal thing that you only half remember for the rest of your life, like... That, like, I kind of missed that era. <laughs> yeah, it's like I love Between the Lions. Yes, hello, fellow Between the Lions knower. I actually, as a kid, I dressed up as Smarty Pants <laughs> um, one year for Halloween. My mom made me like this outfit with like these little pants, um, and she put like a hula hoop in the middle so they would like kind of swing around when I walked. I think I was like two or three years old. Mm. Okay, so. But, uh,. To be fair, though, I feel like the, like, was this a dream or not kind of thing can happen at any time in your life. Yeah. Th there's, there's definitely songs I listened to in high school that I'm like, I can remember the tune, but I can't remember the lyrics, or I can't remember who it was by. Yeah, I, like, there was that movie I asked about on, on Twitter a while ago. Um, that was like, I couldn't remember if my brain had just made it up and, like, combined several other movies from that time period or not. <laughs> I can't remember, were you one of the people who responded to that, or...? Um, which ones were you asking about? It, I think it was The Last Mimsy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I think I, yeah, I did respond, I did tell you about that. Yeah, like... Cause yeah, no, I, I never saw that one, but I definitely remember, I think I had like a magazine as a kid that had like an ad for it on the back. So I definitely remember seeing promotions for it, so it at least existed. Yeah, yeah, I saw it in theaters. <laughs> I remember nothing about it that wasn't in the TV ads. Um, yeah. No, I, I have, like, vague recollections of what it was like, but it was just like, god, what a weird thing. <laughs> it feels like there were a lot of movies in, like, the mid to mid, like, mid-late 2000s that were like, it's a, it's a sci-fi thing involving children. And I feel yeah, like well, just describing it or, that way doesn't quite convey how much they were like actually similar. Mm -hmm. Or you have this like close relative genre of this fantasy thing with children. Because mm -hmm. I know there was a few like that too. Um, Spiderwick Chronicles, like, I think. Spiderwick, yes. that's the one I was looking for. Yeah, that's the one I was God, thinking about. God, I um, hated the Spiderwick Chronicles movie as a kid. 
I don't know. I remember seeing it because I remember we went with some friends. I don't I remember was a anything fan about of the it. books. The books were good. And like I hated the movie because it was just like no, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it so poorly. It's so bad. I don't know. I think the other thing is as a kid, I didn't have a lot of standards. Um I didn't have <laughs> I, admit, I had bad I, I had bad taste as a kid. And I was also like one of those kids who was like I will never say a bad thing about anything. Like, you know, if I didn't like a movie, I would just be like, um, I don't know, it was just okay. Like, I I didn't have standards except when it came to book adaptations. And when it came to book adaptations, I would be fucking savage. <laughs> like, remember Aragon? Er, uh... Yes, I think I, I read the book, yes. Did you ever see the movie? <laughs> Uh, I think bits and pieces. I've been told it wasn't very good. It was I also, awful. in in my defense, I also remember nothing about the book. <laughs> the books were like, I like I remember them being pretty solid for someone who was like 15, fifteen or something when you wrote it. Yeah. Like yeah, like kudos for making a totally readable product at that age. Uh. I don't know. I think the thing is, I think I read it when I was eight years old, and I think at that point, fifteen still felt like. A bajillion years older oh, than yeah, me, so yeah. when people are like, "Oh yeah, he was only 15 when he wrote this," I'm like, "Oh well, that's normal." Yeah, me as <laughs> and a then... kid thinking like, "Oh, I can do this," like I have like I have half my like like I am half the age he was when he did this. This is something I can do if I devote myself. Spoilers, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but then when you like go back as an adult, it's like, yeah, he wrote this when he was 15, and you're like, "Oh my god." A baby. The, the literal infant writing novels. Yeah. I remember, too, uh, there was a book I read when I was a kid. I think it was, I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called, like, Swordbird or something. Uh, I believe the author was, like, 12 when she wrote it. I don't remember if it was good. I remember it was a fantasy about, like, birds. Um, I can imagine, like, I can imagine in a lot of cases, like, uh, the, like, the author was young when they wrote this being a gimmick. For Aragorn, it didn't really feel like that was a gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, oh, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Because there was other things I read as a kid. Oh, did you ever read, um, I don't remember if this, um... Oh, what was the name of the series? Um, I believe it was... Though I remember each of the books had like one word titles. Um, I think it was like magic, but spelled with a Y. Ugh, what was the name of the series? I, um, Septimus Heap? Something like that. I think um, I knew of it. I don't think I read it. I did a lot of reading as a kid, though. Uh, uh, mm, I just remembered one. It, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a book about books and magic. And the whole book gimmick... About books. The, the whole gimmick is that like magic powers to bring books to life oh uh ink spell yes ink spell ink spell, ink spell, yes. ink spell. Those were i remember cool. that one got him that one got a movie and i did, did it was I, I don't remember if it was good i remember it was disappoint i was disappointed with certain things but i don't know i don't remember if it was because those things were bad or if it was because I, like i had very specific visions of certain characters as a kid and it didn't match up i think that a book about books has to be a book that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, like, I don't think it would work uh, as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think of... What was the other one I read as a kid? Um, did you ever read one called The Secret Series? Like, um, it was like a very, like, Lemmy Snicket style kind of thing. Um, and the first one was called, like, the name of this book is Secret. No. Uh, I also never read yeah, Lemmy Snicket, though. They're good. You I, should, I mean, they still hold up really well, I think, as an adult, but also I'm biased. I was, I was often more towards, like, actual fantasy than, like, YA. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess it counts as YA. Yeah, I don't know. I was very much YA, but that was more because I'm like, I'm a child, and I'm going to read things written for children because I'm a child. See, um, I was like that, too, which is why I read shit like Game of Thrones in middle school. <laughs> um. Yeah. I don't know, I think from, I was very much a kid who was like, I'm going to be, I'm a child, so I should do things intended for children. So like, it was one of those things where it's like, I go to a restaurant, and I'm like, I'm going to order off the kid's menu, even if the portions are too small, because I'm a kid, and I should be ordering off the kid's menu. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the same thing with movies. It's like I'm gonna watch a kids movie. For for me, it was always like my my taste very quickly went from like kids books to like. Are you familiar with the Wheel of Time? Uh, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. I read those. In, I started reading those in elementary school. <laughs> like, I my my reading. God, oh God, did it? Did your school have like reading level tests on the? Oh computer? yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the computer, no, but we had them in person. Yeah, where it would be like you take it and it tells you what grade your reading level is. Not it wasn't phrased like that. I believe. Every school I went to had a slightly different system. They didn't do, like, grades. Like, they weren't like, oh, yeah, this is, like, a grade 2 level or, like, a grade 3 level. They basically, um, either they would do it numbered or they would do it by letter. Um, so I believe there was one school I had that was, like, um, yeah, they had them organized by letter with, like, A being the easiest and Z being the hardest, I think, um, or something like that. Uh, so usually every grade would have, like, you know, a recommended level, like... But it wasn't like, oh yeah, this is a grade 2 level. Or it was more just like, okay, well, you're reading at, like, M. <laughs> like, Yeah, uh, whereas, whereas, like, this would be a test that you sit down, you take the test, and it tells you what grade your reading level is at. In third grade, it was telling me that my reading level surpassed the test. Oh yeah, yeah. I was it, like, I was like that too. It was like, oh. it, go, we, it, it stops at... It stops at s freshman of college, and that's where I was. Yeah, see, my problem with those was that, um, apparently as a kid I was just bad with reading comprehension. Like, what would happen a lot of the time is that I was really good at reading things out loud, which was like half the test. Like, they would, usually what they would, how they would do it is they would have like a teacher be like, okay, read this story out loud so that they would get the point of like okay you can read the words and then they would ask you questions about the story um so my problem was apparently i would i would read things out loud like super well and then i would fall apart at the uh actual reading comprehension parts mm -hmm. uh but yeah i was still ahead of grade level though i think mm -hmm. yeah it's just mm. I know. Re re God, reading as a kid was fun. Yeah, I, I feel it, like... I still do a lot of reading, but it feels very different now. Yeah. Eggs are smooth, words just slide right off. That's true. <laughs> I don't know, I'm like, maybe I should have been like a child actor or something. If I was that good at like doing dramatic readings, even if I didn't understand what was actually happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, I think... Yeah, I feel like reading as a kid was more fun because I feel like kids' books in general are just more fun. Like, I, as maybe I was... have said, I wasn't reading kids' books. I was. Yeah. I was reading the the, the fantasy books my dad had. Like, yeah. See, I think, I think the problem with me was like because I know my parents were aware that I was like good at reading, so it was one of those problems where they're like, okay, we want her to read books that are appropriate for her like grade level, but also we don't want her reading things that are inappropriate for her age. So there was still that caveat of, like, what is, like, things that are age-appropriate aren't necessarily at my reading level, and things that are at my reading level weren't necessarily age-appropriate, and so, yeah, I think I ended up, I still read a lot of, like, YA stuff just because it was appropriate for my age, but I don't know, it's not like I didn't read books for adults, it just wasn't until much, much later. Yeah, whereas, like, I, I, my dad would just be like, here, uh, read these, uh, and it would be like, oh, cool, okay. And, like, sometimes it would be, like, Percy Jackson. Sometimes it would be, um, the Pierce Anthony book about death. I have no idea if that book, if the Pierce Anthony book about death has aged well. And my gut says no. I think it was On a Pale Horse. Like, it's a very cool concept. I just, like, I, I really liked it at the time. But it's just, like, this guy, like, this guy is about to kill himself, and then death comes in to be like, hey, you're dying, I'm gonna take you to the afterlife. And then he freaks out and kills death. And then has to take death's uh, place. 
I mean, um, that does sound like a good premise. That's, yeah, that yeah, is it's a like it's premise. a fun premise. It's just kind of like. Mm, fun fact: that's the book that I learned the word virgin from. <laughs> yeah, see, I think that's what my parents are trying to avoid. My mom was super pissed at my dad for that. <laughs> yeah, I think. I was like, I don't know. Hey, mom, what's this word? And she, she was just like. Ugh. Yeah, that was a book I, when I was a kid. I read books over my Goodwill. I had to read multiple times to understand them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I ever had that. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't think I ever had that problem. It's weird, too, because reading is one of those things where once you know how to do it, you forget that you ever had trouble with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember sometimes that would happen when I was like working at summer camps with kids is like, we might write down like a script or like, you know, a list of instructions or something and we give them to the kids and the kids are like, we are five years old and illiterate. And it's like, oh, right. That, Reading's a thing you have to learn how to do. That, that's the feeling I get on Twitter sometimes. It's like, oh, right. You aren't born knowing how to read. It's the same thing with, like, walking. Or even for me, knitting. I find knitting is like that, too. If someone asks me, like, teach me how to knit, for me, it's a bit like saying, like, hey, teach me how to walk. It's like, I, I know there is a way to instruct people to do this, but once you know how to do it, it's hard to remember a time when you didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, I could not sing. I would simply hit the notes. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of like what other books did I read as a kid? Uh, also from Pierce Anthony the Sant books, which were much more like age. Ap Ooh, no, I'm not going to call them age appropriate. They were much more all ages. And I know that those haven't aged well, because if you go to Pierce Anthony's uh, Wikipedia page these days, um, uh, a f apparently a few years ago there was a social media controversy where people were like, actually, these books haven't aged well. And Pierce Anthony was like, mm, mm, I disagree. You, you, you kids just need to stop being so, being so uh, PC or whatever. It's kind of like, ah. I guess I'm never going to be revisiting these books that I loved as a kid. It's like, that's also the case with video games. People just assume everyone knows how to play one and take things for granted, like dashing. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. I know um, a while back, like earlier this year, um, my mom wanted to try playing Animal Crossing. Uh, so, like, I got her set up. Like, I got her, like, you know, little character on her island. But the thing is, is, like, I realized when she was playing this, yeah, they don't explain anything because there's so many things like, you know, you walk around using the joy stick, like stuff like that where they just don't explain or like press A to continue. They don't explain it because for most people playing, it would be redundant. But if you've never played a game before, it's like, what do I do next? Like, what do I do now? Yeah, it feels like the only games that like do that, like actually explain how to play are ones that are either for new control schemes like, oh, mm -hmm. we, every Wii game for the first several years had to be like, all right, here's how this shit works. Um, yeah. Or if it's like, um, specifically for begin, like, basically for children, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Or if it has just like an unconventional um, control scheme. Yeah. I mean, I know one thing I found with the Switch that seems to be helpful is a lot of the times on the diagrams, instead of saying press the A button, they'll just have, like, a little diagram with the, like, you know, where the A button would be on the D-pad, like, is just, like, blocked out. Which is useful, first of all, because sometimes if you're doing, like, the thing where you, like, split the controllers and, like, you're holding it sideways, um... It makes more sense but yeah it is also helpful because a lot of the times it's like it's like press b to continue and it's like which one's b which one's b which mm -hmm. one's b mm -hmm. especially in the wii mode i think too because the b button was in the back i definitely remember my parents being like oh god like we have at wii sports it's like press a and b to continue and they're the like wii which one's controls. b and it's like the wii controls yeah. were so bad <laughs> like because there was also that like the the extra thing that you had to attach to it sometimes yeah, the nunchuck, yeah. Well, I don't know. I think the thing with Wii controls is, like, I found that I feel like they're less intuitive for people who play a lot of video games, but for people who don't play as many video games, they might be more intuitive, mm -hmm. just because of, like, the motion kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, like, the Wii was super popular among people who didn't play video games for that reason. Yeah. 
Because, like, if you're playing, like, a motion game, you you can figure out that, like, you know, punt, like, move the thing forward in a punching motion to punch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But if, but and if I think... Uh, yeah. A lot of the most popular Wii games, I think, too, like, you had stuff like, you know, Twilight Princess, or, like, stuff that was, like, you know, Games. game gamey. But then you had stuff that was really popular, you know, like Wii Fit, or Wii Sports, or stuff that was, like, games, but they weren't, like, a, they're not like other games. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're very much more motion-focused, I guess. Yeah, because, well, yeah, like, I was thinking that, like, a, ga- a-, a game like, um, I don't actually, I never played Twilight Princess, so I don't know if it is the nunchuck, but, like, a game using both parts of the controller would then be more complicated, just because it's, like, you have to figure out what both parts are doing and stuff. Yeah. I think, okay, Twilight Princess was an interesting case, because I think it was developed for both the GameCube and the Wii. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if I remember correctly, you would use the joystick on the nunchuck to move Link around. Um, and then you would use... Uh, like, the Wii remote, you would, like, you know, shake it to attack. Uh, so, yeah, I remember the control scheme wasn't actually that confusing. But I think that was also because they were kind of limited because it also needed to work for the GameCube. Mm-hmm. I... And then as the Wii's lifespan grew, people just started making two games. Yeah, yeah. Like... I think... Also, I think... I don't know. I also think, too, I remember Skyward Sword... I don't know, I think Skyward Sword actually had worse controls than Twilight Princess. Because Twilight Princess, like, was released very early in the Wii's lifespan. So, the motion controls were very simple, because it was literally just, like, shake remote, link shake sword, that's all there is to it. Whereas I feel like uh, Skyward Sword tried to do the thing where it's like, shake it in this specific direction, you gotta slash in this direction and in this direction, and, like, if the technology just wasn't working, then it's, it's good luck. Have yeah, fun. Yeah, that, that, that sucks, IMO. I, I never played yeah. that either. Mm-hmm. Um, Skyward Sword is famous for its bad controls more than anything else possible. Yeah, I think the thing with Skyward Sword is I feel like it was kind of ahead of its time. Um, it's like, you can see what they were trying to do, but the technology just wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. Which, like, in retrospect, the Wii was super fucking ambitious. Mm-hmm. Like, it kind of... It pushed uh, the the industry forward. Because mm-hmm. it, it was like, Nintendo, out of nowhere, are like, here is a full motion control system. <laughs> and then every other, it, it then it sold massively, and every other game company was like, uh, shit, we need to do this too? And then yeah. so, Microsoft and Sony both did their own things. Um... My brother had an Xbox, so we had Kinect, and mm-hmm. boy, Kinect was- Wasn't Kinect terrible? <laughs> not- it was not good. Yeah, wasn't it like really janky? I remember seeing like reviews at the time of Kinect games, and they were like- Like you would have to either move your body in very awkward ways in order to make it work, or it just straight up wouldn't y- Yeah, you- work. it was either like, you, you, you figured out how it worked, or you didn't. But it wasn't. It was nowhere as in, as intuitive as uh as the um as the Wii was. Mhm. But it was like. Well, I don't know. I feel like. Mm-hmm. I feel like with motion controls too, kind of less is more. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the ones that are like we're gonna do full body tracking and everyone's gonna like move their whole body and that's how you control it. It's like those never seem to work quite right. But the ones that are like you know, just do a simple weight motion kind of thing. Those seem to work a lot better. Yeah. Like, th- I don't think there has been a game as good for motion controls um, as, like, the Wii Sports type stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what's worked really well? Um, Ring Fit Adventure. Hmm. Like, I feel like Wii Fit... Wii Fit walks so Ring Fit could run, but... Wii Fit was one of those things where it's like, this is good ideas, but a lot of the technology just kind of... Again, it's like, ideas good, the technology just wasn't quite there yet. Uh-huh. But Ring Fit controls really well. Like, um... I haven't... I mean, it. Yeah. Because, yeah, how it works for Ring Fit is you have... 
you know, you have the ring that you can like pull on or push in. It has some like, you know, traction to it. Uh, but you put one of the Joy-Cons on there and then the second one goes, like you have like a leg strap. So you put the other one around your leg. Um, so yeah, and it works really well. Like just with those two things, it can kind of do the adequate motion controls. And you can do more with it too, because I think the other thing with the Wii Balance Board was that you it could only withstand so much pressure. So like stuff like running and stuff, you couldn't really do on a balance board because you would literally break it. Mm -hmm. But with just the two Joy-Cons, you can do a lot more. Like you're not limited by having to stand on a balance board or have to hold something the entire time. Yeah, I think like the fact that the, the Switch incorporated motion controls without the motion controls being the center of it was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, again, less is more. <laughs> you still get a lot of devs unnecessarily throwing in motion controls, like in Mario Odyssey. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you can just have a normal game, or you can have a motion control game. Mm -hmm. yeah, the main thing I saw people get excited for the remaster was that they announced motion controls were not required. Oh yeah, for Skyward Sword. Yeah, I should play the Skyward Sword remaster sometime. I'll add it to the list. Because <laughs> I remember I played it when I was younger, like when it came out. And yeah, I remember having a lot of issues with the control, but I remember flying was really fun. Like, I like the idea of Link just like, you know, jumping off the edge of a floating city mm -hmm. and then just like catching a bird. I always love doing that. Like, yeah. that was the best part of the game. <laughs> I was like interested in that game, but by the time it came out, I had sort of like... I think it took too long between getting announced and coming out that I was just kind of like, eh, by, by the time it was released. Mm -hmm. I think I asked for it for the holidays. Like, it was a Christmas present. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think the thing was that, like, I asked for it for a Christmas present without realizing that it would still be another year before it came out. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, see, I wasn't following... I wasn't really following games at that point. Like, mm -hmm. for me, I think I just saw... a ad on TV for it. And I'm like, oh, hey, Zelda. I know Zelda. I like Zelda. There's yeah, a new I Zelda. Like, usually I didn't hear about stuff until it was already, like, either already released or just about to release. Yeah, around that time, and, like, a, a bit on both sides of its release, like, I was just a Zelda fan. Um, so, like, I, I was just interested in it. Interested in it. Mm -hmm. But also the fact that I was a Zelda fan makes it kind of funny that I never actually played uh, Twilight, Twilight Princess. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like the Twilight... handhelds. Yeah, Twilight Princess. I think I played a lot later, but yeah, I also never played any of like the classics. TM like I never played Ocarina of Time. Never played Majora's Mask. I played Ocarina of never Time. Never played um, the other one that people like, um, Wind Waker. Yeah, did you ever play the DS ones? Yes, yes, I played both of them. Th those were very good, IMO. Yeah, I think one of them was definitely harder than the other. Like, I remember I beat Phantom Hourglass in, like, two days. Like, I got to the end, I'm like, wait, that's it? Mm. But uh, Spirit Tracks, I took a lot longer. But I feel like those are fun just for, like, ex exploration, kind of. Like, I remember Spirit Tracks, sometimes I just, like, go around in the train and just stop at the different villages. Yeah, they, they were, they were, like, I really liked that they were just, like, something completely different from other, um, Zelda games. And I, mm -hmm. I prefer Twilight, or, uh, or, um, uh, Phantom Hourglass. Yeah, Phantom Hourglass, I, I liked kind of, like, the freeform I, boat thing. I think my favorite thing was, like, being able to find random islands. Like, do you remember that island that was yeah. shaped like a Nintendo DS? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, yeah, it was just, like, a very fun to just explore. Um, and I think when, uh, when Spirit Tracks came out, I was a little disappointed that it was so, uh, pardon the pun, railroaded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it, it does get kind of annoying when you have, like, very limited places you can go. Mm -hmm. I also remember with Spirit Tracks, I think, um... Sometimes you just screw yourself over when writing the map, because you're like, oh... If you crash into a train sometimes, by the time... Like, cause you know how to, you'd have other trains on the tracks, mm. right? Uh, and sometimes I just crash into one because by the time you realize that it's there, it's already too late. Like, you can't yeah. turn back. <laughs> so yeah, I remember that was a little frustrating, but... Um, 
I don't know. It still kind of had that exploration, though, because yeah, yeah. you you still would eventually like find train stations out in the middle of nowhere, and then you get off, and it's like, here's a rabbit petting zoo. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it definitely had some interesting stuff, and I do remember enjoying it. It's just that, like, I don't know. I like the ocean. <laughs> Boat good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I also did like what's his name from Phantom Hourglass. Uh, uh, Linebeck? Linebeck? Yeah, I, li I like him a lot. <laughs> mm hmm Yeah, that game was just very good. <laughs> um. And so it's just like... Those two, I also played uh, Minish Cap. Mm hmm Uh, several years before that. Did you ever play that one? I don't think so. I think I read, like, the manga adaptation. Because <laughs> they had them at the library, but I don't think I ever actually played it. It was a fun game. Uh, very charming. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Here, oh, sorry, I just remembered this now. The other thing I liked with Spirit Tracks, I liked having Zelda with you the entire time. Yeah, that, that was Like, that was fun. I liked that. Yeah. The actual, like, just... the, the times that you actually had to control Zelda were kind of jank. But Phantom Hourglass also had that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I just, like, as characters, I liked having her Actually, no. kind of around the entire time. Phantom Hourglass didn't have that problem, but it had its own problems with it, with the, like, similar tower dungeon thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, it like, time to go back to Temple of the Ocean King again. Mm -hmm. It was just very annoying. But, like, I appreciate those games <laughs> for being, like, yeah. interesting. Um, also, uh, there was the, there was the Link to the Past sequel for 3DS. Do you ever play that one? No, and I wasn't aware of it until, like, well after the DS, like, the 3DS's lifespan was done. Yeah, that, that was, when that came out, that was well past my, uh, Zelda phase. But, like... Mm, wasn't that the one where you could, like, go into walls? Yes, it, it, um... It, it, like, that was sort of a gimmick with it, but it was a cool gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I think for 3DS, for the longest time, I wasn't aware that there was a 3DS exclusive um, Zelda game. I just thought that they had ported, like, I just thought they ported some games and that was it. Yeah, and, like, they... And they realized there actually was one. Uh, they could have named it better. I can't, I can't remember what it was called, but it was something way too similar to Link to the Past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I feel like a lot of these blend together, too. And, like, it it was very much like Link to the Past, because it was a sequel, it used the same game map, um, and everything. Link Between Worlds, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, okay, that's a really generic title. That feels like, um, like a randomly generated Zelda game title. Yeah, and it's like, it's a cool game, it just probably should have been titled better. Yeah. God, I really hate Virtue's Last Rewards ding ding sound. I instinctively think it's my work at Buzz and the boss is mad again. <laughs> ding! I feel like I might have heard it in a different game too. I feel like Spike Trinsoff reuses a lot of their sound effects because I've definitely heard like Zero Escape sound effects in other Spike Trinsoff games. Mm -hmm. Like... I, the Somnium Files, definitely, I think, has the same door-closing noise uh, as the Zero Escape games. And I feel like uh, the save noises are also the same thing. Like, the noises on the menus are the same. Uh -huh. I guess you, once you have one asset, that works. Yeah. Yeah. I should stream I, the Somnium Files. Yeah. Maybe I'll do that sometime. Okay. Now that I can capture the Switch. Mm-hmm. What do you think, everybody? What are your thoughts? Or do you have any? Unless, if you've never heard of I, the Somnium Files, you probably don't have any thoughts. I just remember that they remade Wind Waker for Wii U. Yeah. I'm kind of annoyed that they did that, because I much would have preferred they saved that for the Switch. Yeah, but I guess at the time... Yeah. Yeah. I've watched Rain play Somnium, VLR, and 999. They're good games. Yeah. Okay, Rain's game test. Good. <laughs> I saw it. I think I was there. I watched her uh, play through uh, Somnium Files as well, because I'm like, yes, somebody's streaming this. Somebody's streaming this. Uh, 
Yeah, I definitely, I'm like, yes, good game pace, good game pace. I don't know where she's at right now. Is she still doing um, VLR, I think? I think she's still making her way through VLR. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Oh, what's her name? Um, Anya. Anya. Uh, she streamed? Okay, you know what was that one you were talking about? The one that... Zero Escape Among Us. What was it called? Gnosia? Gnosia? No, Gnosia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was streaming it the other day, but I think I was sleeping or at school or something. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't catch it. I should go back and watch the VOD because I haven't actually seen much of that game aside from what's in the trailers, which isn't much at all. I mean, for, at least but maybe, I, yeah, it's for the Switch. Maybe played, I should stream that too. At least from what I've played, it's not a complicated game. Mm hmm. I mean, like, admittedly, I haven't played too much, and it feels like there should be more. Because it feels like, as I have played it now, there is no venue for the story. Because it's just gameplay. It's just gameplay. Yeah, it's just doing games of werewolf over and over again. Ah, maybe it's like one of those things where you gotta, like, do all the possible routes. Yeah. Like, she just, she just finished VLR, she literally broke down LMAO. Oh my god, I feel like, does she, do you know if she plans to stream Zero Time Dilemma? Because I, I've, I've been heard, I've been heard, I've heard that game breaks people. <laughs> I, I, what I have heard about Zero Time Dilemma is so dumb. Zero Time Dilemma, I've been told, is basically the whole franchise just jumping the shark. Like, yeah, I have one precise spoiler and a bunch of vague spoilers, and that one precise spoiler is the dumbest thing. <laughs> yeah, and, I've been and, told that- I feel I've been told- okay, from what I've heard, people were disappointed with it, but it was also apparently disappointing in a fun way. Like, it was one of those games that really just takes all the aspects of the series and just like, also, brings them to their natural extreme. Like, I'll just take it, this, takes it all a step too I'll far. I'll tell you this, it has retcons. Oh boy. And one of, the one thing I know, the one spoiler I know is a retcon, which is really funny in light of stuff that we have already played through. Yeah, I think for me, uh, all I know about it are the memes. All I know about it are, is just like, m complex motives, a snail is lying down on the road, life is simply unfair. Isn't it like, a that's all I know about on it. the ground? Or no, wasn't it a snail? I'm pretty sure it was a snail. I'm thinking of Blade Runner. <laughs> but, but yeah, she's taking a break from long games for now, though. Okay, yeah. Because I definitely plan, if I can, um... I want to stream uh, Zero Time Dilemma yeah, after yeah. this. If I can get it, because um, I'm not sure how my computer's going to handle it, but if I can, um, I definitely want to. Mm -hmm. but, uh... <sighs> but yeah, no, I feel like I need to kind of re... Not redo my schedule, but like rethink how I do my schedules. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm... Because of the way I've been doing it where I'm like, okay, on this day I play this game. And like, it's good because it makes things easier to plan because you already have half the thing done for you. But it, it's also kind of causing me to burn out on specific games just because uh -huh. I'm playing them week after week. <laughs> like, I don't really get a break from them. But... Uh -huh. Yeah, VLR is full of silly guns. I mean, on top of each other is funny. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I feel like that's just Uchikoshi games in general. Like, anything that's mentioned is going to come back later. Mm. But you can also tell what's going to come back later because it's going to be mentioned out of completely out of nowhere. It's like the, like, Ice Nine thing in 999 where it's like, Everyone just like Look. talks about like yeah. the freezing point of glycerin for like ten minutes while being stuck in a freezer, and then but you're the like, okay, well, that's they talked about this for too long that it for it not to come up again. But the thing is, when when you're going between games, it's a lot harder to plan out. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unless you have an idea of where the story is going from the start, you are going to need to do some amount of like making something relevant in retrospect. 
Yeah, well, well, I think also, too, um, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, Zero Time Dilemma was crowdfunded. Like, it almost didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know... And I also don't know, like, um, when he wrote 999, if he originally wrote it as a series, or if he wrote it as, like, a one-off game, and with then the ended, later they decided... With like, the way it ended, with, like, Alice at the, uh, at the end, um, like, that had to have- that, that was, like, clear sequel bait. So if he didn't have something mm-hmm. in mind, like, that would have been really ballsy, fr- uh, frankly, <laughs> to be like- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're ending on a cliffhanger. I don't know how it's going to end. Or, like, yeah. how it's going to But on the other hand, it also does feel like a cliffhanger where it's like, yeah, there's no conclusion there, but isn't it fun to imagine your own conclusion? Yeah. Like, um. it's like horror stories that end on, like, a very vague note. It's like, well, what was that? We don't know, but isn't that really scary? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, for the thing I know, I am fairly certain that, uh, that, um, Ichikoshi did not plan it out in advance, or if he did plan it out in advance, that's really fucking funny. (laughs) And I respect the shit out of him, but also, dude, what the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, no, I also think, um... I wonder what's gonna happen because they announced a second Somnium Files game. Uh, did you see that? It was a—I think it was back yeah. in April or May. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw you posting about it. Yeah. On one hand, I'm very excited, and from what I've been hearing from like people involved, apparently, it is like, yeah, the translators are like, yeah, this is this was really good. But it's also like these are people involved with making the game, so how trustworthy are they? But, um, yeah. But it's one of those things where I'm like. The ending of Somnium Files is kind of perfect. Like, there's no- nowhere else you need to go with this. So I don't know- I have absolutely no idea what they're gonna do with the sequel. Mm-hmm. Because it ended on kind of a perfect note. Like, everything's tied up all perfectly. So I'm like, where is there left to go? Mm. Like... I see. Uh, I, I want to get to I at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's also the magical prequel. Ooh, prequels. Yeah, I mean, I guess prequels are easier to do than sequels, though. Mm-hmm. Because, Cause, like, prequels, the ending is already kind of written for you. Yeah, it, it's... With a prequel, generally, like, you're just filling in whatever blanks you have from, um, from the original work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, I guess with prequels, it's more of a matter of, like, concept. It's like, okay, which one of these people is interesting enough to warrant a backstory? Yeah, and it's like, sometimes there is a very clear backstory that has that we don't get to see a lot of. But then sometimes it's like, you don't really have much to work from. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I don't think a uh, prequel for 999 would work especially well yeah i don't think it would be needed like like the most you can do is show that first um that first the first nonary game yeah 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 but we already know what happened there um Mm -hmm. so it's like you know that can work uh you can throw in some extra drama that way but it's not really needed yeah 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 and i don't know how much i i think the bigger thing regardless of needed, is that I don't think you could get much out of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, especially, too, because a lot of the time it's, like, explained in the game itself in such detail that, like, there's nothing you can get from making it a whole game that you couldn't get from just doing a flashback. Yeah, it's like, maybe you could write, like, a light novel about it. Mm-hmm. And, like, half the no- like half the reason for it to exist is the novelty of putting the story in a new medium. Yeah, I feel like at that point you also run into the danger of, like, Danganronpa, where it feels like all the open, like, all the open holes did not need to be filled, I because a lot of the time... I bring up Danganronpa, yeah, actually. because I feel like, yeah, Danganronpa is one of those things where there's, like, a whole bunch of unanswered questions, and it turns out the answer just kind of sucks. Like, did you ever read Danganronpa, uh, Danganronpa Zero? 
Uh, I don't think I've read any of the, like, side story novel stuff. Uh-huh. Uh... D Rampa Zero is... The whole point is that it's showing stuff happening at Hope's Peak before the first game. Mm -hmm. It's all, like... If you've seen Danganronpa 3, it takes place... Mm -hmm. It takes place, like, in the second half of ah, okay, Danganronpa okay. 3. After the Tsubasa mo Kudasai scene... Uh, oh, okay, so, like, yeah, as things are, like, falling up, falling down, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, I and think... The whole thing yeah. is basically just an excuse to parade around a literal blank slate amnesiac character to be like, here is everything that is happening. Yeah. Okay, show me on Danganronpa, how fast is it to go through? Fast, um... Okay, there's three games. Um, it's like 25 first... hours, 30 hours, and 40 hours, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, Plus an anime. And yeah, it depends. Yeah, I mean, okay, here's the thing. It depends on, A, how fast you read or and or, like, how good you are at solving puzzles. Um, the first game has an anime adaptation. Um, Don't watch if, that. Yeah, it's I mean, bad. you can if you want. I mean... It's bad. You can start it and then give up halfway through and start playing the game instead because you realize it's better, but, like... <laughs> Um, the second and third games don't have any anime adaptations. There's also uh, an anime original called Danganronpa. Danganronpa 3. Which is good. Uh, which is not the same thing as Danganronpa V3. Um, so yeah. Uh, preferred order, like preferred watch slash play order would be like Danganronpa, Danganronpa 2, Danganronpa 3 anime, and then Danganronpa V3. Yep. Uh, there's also another like side game. Uh, Oh, ultra uh, dis yeah, ultra despair girls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, UDG would go between uh, Danganronpa two and Danganronpa three. Yeah, and in fact, Danganronpa uh, three is a sequel to UDG in some places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of a side story though. So like, if it's because it's also a completely different kind of game. Like, it's like a third person shooter. So if it's not your kind of thing, it's not like obligatory. But it is. It, it is like. It, a nice addition. I mean, like, there, a lot of stuff in Danganronpa 3 is, like, tied to it. Mm -hmm. Well, only in, like, one episode. I don't know. No, because, like, <laughs> um, like I, how to be spoiler-free uh, about it, there is a character who is relevant elsewhere, um, who, there is a character who would not be involved if not for stuff in UDG. That's true, that's true. But yeah, no, um, yeah, overall, it's one of those franchises that I feel like has kind of taken on a life of its own. Um, it's also one of those franchises, like, you know how, like, people would be like, oh, I hate Danganronpa, but, like, also, this is the Danganronpa fandom, and people do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, like, a perfect game or anything, but it's it's worth playing, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I am definitely a big fan of it, having spent, you know... Uh, a long time on this channel playing through it with Yeah, yeah, isn't that like most of your, like most of what you've done so far? It was like six months. Danganronpa and or Danganronpa related? It was like six months. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, yeah, no, if you've, if you've enjoyed Zero Escape or Ace Attorney in any capacity, I would recommend. Or, or uh, or throwing out a line, Zada Goto. If you're a Zarda Goto fan, you will like Danganronpa. I feel like that recommendation is more likely to occur the other way around. <laughs> right, if you like Danganronpa, read Zarda Goto. <laughs> Zarda Goto is very good, as is Danganronpa. <laughs> but like, 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 look, I, I got into uh, Danganronpa through Zarda Goto, so clearly, clearly that is a non-zero pipeline. Yeah, yeah. I feel I don't know. I think I got into it through Ace Attorney. Like I finished the all the Ace Attorney games, and I was like, okay, games like this, and like usually the first thing people point to is Danganronpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for for me it was just like, oh yeah, this thing seems like uh, Zadagoto. The writer has credited Zadagoto as an influence. I want more Zadagoto and. 
novel there aren't enough novels translated yet. You're like, okay, this'll do. Yeah. And yeah. there were exactly two locked room mysteries in uh in 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 all of those games. Actually was it more than two? Do you is there one locked room mystery per game? Or for Danganronpa? Yeah, because in I the- I think there's, a, there's only one locked room mystery. Oh, oh, mystery, sorry. Because I know there's like an escape room thing in- Yeah, no, in I'm talking about- so, uh, mm, I almost said a thing. Uh, the fourth chapter in the first game, uh, that one, um, yeah. is a locked room mystery. And then the third, the third, uh, case in the, in V3 is also a locked room mystery. Is there one in the second game? Probably. Except I can't think of what it is. Wait, no, I Yeah, think, I, I, think... I also can't remember, like, I feel like I'm if I open my mouth anymore, a spoiler will simply fall out. I almost so... did that, yes. Um, but no, I feel like, uh... Where it's, um... Chapter, uh, chapter three of the second game, maybe? I think yeah, there was, like, like, something about it being a locked room yeah. I don't remember much of chapter three of the second game. All I remember is rage. Angry. I don't know. I think I think you might be right. I believe that one might be the locked room one. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like locked room mysteries are just, like, a common enough type of mystery that, like, if you have a game where you have, like, five different mysteries, like, one of them is bound to be a locked room. Especially when one of your main influences is a series of murder mysteries where every single book is a locked room mystery. <laughs> it's like nobody ever unlocks their doors here. Well, it's more like if you're doing an incredibly elaborate murder, you're gonna make it mm -hmm. look like a locked room mystery. Just yeah. to get away with it. So, so it's like... That, that happens in multiple Zonagoto books. Because, um... yeah, I know Ace Attorney has locked room mysteries, too, but I think it is also another, like, one of those things where it's, like, one per game is enough. Mm-hmm. Whereas, uh, Z Zonagoto is one... No! I would say one per book, but there are definitely books where you get more than one. Mm hmm Like, the uh, first you one, play in and yeah. I think the second one. Not yeah. the third one, but... Uh, maybe the fourth and fifth. Yeah. Can you play any of these while you're doing paperwork? Just watch streams and play Magic Gathering while working anyway? Um, yes and no. Uh, Danganronpa, the trials, um, like, there's some parts of the game that are fully voice acted. So, like, if you wanted to just keep, like, like if you play with English voices and you just keep it going, but, well, no, you couldn't. Um, there, there will be important stuff and also gameplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's, like, the uh, the non-trial scenes, I don't think, they're not fully voice acted. Like, you just get a lot of, like, huh? 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 Or, like, mm -hmm. my name is Nagito Komaeda. Like, you just get, like, self-introductions and that's it. Um, I think... Um, Zero Escape, you might be able to do the story portions while doing other things if you're playing with English voices. Um, or just... Or but, us. yeah, no, Dan... Yeah. Danganronpa, I definitely recommend, like, you know, Paying sitting down too. and actually playing them. Yeah. Um, same with Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney, they're not really voice acted. I'm sure you could watch somebody, like, stream them and read everything out for you. But, no, they're not really voice acted either. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the Somnium Files, I believe, is fully voice acted. But that one, you still need to run around for the puzzle sequences. I just remember that there's yeah. a new Danganronpa game coming out this year. That's kind of fucked. They're doing another one? Yeah. It's not a, it's not a mainline game, it's a spin-off. Who's working on it? Uh, all of the people who wrote the free time events and such for, um, for, uh, V3 and other games. Interesting. Because it's... It's an expansion of the, um, of the board game from V3. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's just like that, and it's just a whole bunch of fluff written by the people who write the free time events. And So it's basically the fluff writers writing what they were usually writing anyway. Yeah, which is kind of yeah. funny because, like, I, I, 
it it goes to it goes to say something about how meaningless free time events are that they that the director and like creative lead and writer he can leave and these people can just go, make their make a new game yeah yeah, I guess that's the joy of VTubers. Watch someone play video games and bash their heads against the wall for you. Yeah. <laughs> Watch us get everything wrong. Mm-hmm. Watch us give up and look up the answer online. <laughs> I don't know. I like... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think the thing for me is that when watching game streams for these kinds of games, if it's a game I'm not interested in, I'm like, okay, I'll set this one out. I'm not really interested. But if it's a game I am interested in, my brain is like, oh my god, this is so difficult to watch you play. You're doing everything wrong. Mm-hmm. I just prefer and then to I... go, th- go through things at my own pace. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I could never just watch a game. Because it's like, sometimes, like, while I'm, like, when I'm going through, like, adventure games or visual novels, I will play on auto most of the time. Mm-hmm. But then it's yeah, like, that's what I've been doing with Ace Attorney. But then it's also like, okay, sometimes I will, like, go at my own pace for it. Yeah. I know what I've been doing for, like, Great Ace Attorney is turning things to auto um, during, like, the dialogue scenes. So I can just kind of, like, watch them while I'm eating and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, I have to, like, play the trial sequences on purpose. But, yeah, because so much of the game is just dialogue... Um, you can just kind of like leave it on auto and you know eat your lunch or whatever while it's going mm-hmm. anyway in, in the actual game uh interesting things are happening yeah we're dying and there is oh. a, there's a fun screen filter on <laughs> that's how you know you're dying yo nope. but uh this is when your vision go yep I should replay uh, World's End Club. That was a good game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works all right if you're just watching for the story, then zone out if they're stuck in a puzzle or go make coffee or something. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Mm-hmm. I think also, too, it depends, because I know... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of Dio with, like, the Doug Dimodome hat. Um, yeah, I think... It- for some games, because sometimes you have people who are streaming it and they're like, you know, voice actors or whatever, and they're like, you know, voice acting all the parts, and that can be fun. But then, like, I don't know. I think I'm good. If I just want to, like, watch somebody stream and read everything out, then it's like, nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just prefer to do things at my own pace. But I also just don't watch a lot of, like, let's play stream type content. Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm slowly realizing my favorite thing to watch for, like, streamings is just like chat streams like just zetsudans they're literally like people i watch where they'll start the stream with like you know chatting and they'll chat for you know like half an hour or something and then they jump to like then they go to the game and i i leave <laughs> i just leave when they go to the game because i'm like no i want to hear you talk more mm-hmm. i don't care about whatever you're playing i want to <laughs> keep talking and, and 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 that's why these streams are so good because we never stop talking <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I'm not here for the game. Well, that's what I've been thinking with, like... Because, like, my... I mean, that's the nice thing, though, with stuff like Minecraft or Stardew Valley, where it's like, this is just a Zatsudan in disguise. Like... Yeah. You can be talking about like, anything. Mm-hmm. Or even my knitting streams are also just, like, chat streams where there just happens to also be something else going on on the screen. Mm-hmm. Like, having something on screen, like, helps. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I suppose that's what models are for, but, like, sometimes you want something more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, too, like, I have, like, a Rose of Versailles coloring book sitting around. I've thought of doing, like, something similar with, like, coloring stream, where I just, like, color a picture. But the problem is I'm not good at art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I... What I was using for it was, like, you know, watercolor pencil crayons. So you can kind of, like... It's the one where you, like, color stuff in, and then you go over it with water, and it, like, makes it look like you're good at painting. But, yeah, like, I don't know. I'm not actually good at art. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. God, th- Sorry. This filter gets so <laughs> it's funny hilarious. when characters are on screen. <laughs> I know. That's what I was saying with, like, Dio's giant hat, and then, like, Clover just gets, like, briefly thick. <laughs> 
Yeah, a Rosa Versailles coloring book, aka the manga. No, it's like a coloring book, like on purpose. Um, I bought it in like 2018 and I did some of the pages. Oh my god. <laughs> Pink brain five, five head five, five head. <laughs> the clover's always thick. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the... she's not even the thickest out of this game. Yeah, uh, she is small. She looks like yeah. a- Yeah. She looks less like a child in this game, but I thought she was 14 for most of, uh, uh, 999. Like... Oh, her forehead is thick. Yeah, Clover has got a really thick ponytail. Um, but yeah, no, it's... Yeah, coloring. Or I've also thought of too, I want to kind of try making like a teddy bear or something. I figure if I make a small one, I might be able to do it within the span of like a few hours and just do like one stream of just like make bear. Mm, or make it a multi stream project, I suppose. Well, no, but the thing is like, maybe assembling the parts would take a while. I would have to try to do it on my own. Because like right now, my current project is a sweater, which is absolutely not something that you can do over the course of one stream. Um, but I want to see, like, because a teddy bear, it's, especially if you're doing a small bear, like, the time spent knitting isn't actually that much. Like, I'd probably spend more time counting stitches than actually knitting. I think it's just assembling the parts that would be a bit more complicated. Uh-huh. But I'd have to try it out for myself. Like, mm -hmm. a small bear is small. S small things are small. Yeah, that's my conclusion. <laughs> <sighs> Or at one point, too, I thought of doing, like, a VTuber quilt. Like, I would just, like, do squares for different VTubers I like. So I might do, like, you know, a hollow life square or, like, you know, design, like, a little pattern for it. But then I would need, like, a bajillion colors. Mm -hmm. And I also have to come up with, like, an exact amount of squares I need because you can't, like, you know, you gotta have, like, you know, like, your, your quilt needs to be a rectangle. Like, you can't just have, like, one row of squares that's unfinished and has, like, two left in the corner, you know? Mm -hmm. I was not expecting that to be a bad end. But I suppose we just died, so... Yeah, I mean, that is a bad end. Generally, dying so is bad. So, we, 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 there is something we st still need to unlock. Fuck, I keep doing this! <laughs> Did we just jump back to the beginning? Yes, I keep doing this. Black. There we go. Okay. So... Hmm. Hmm. Is this something we can pass yet? I don't remember. Because we're playing this in a different order than I did when I played it, so I'm like... A lot let's of this just, I just straight up... Let's just go back I just straight up do not remember, <laughs> yeah. I will or put like, it on I didn't skip. run into the specific problem. I will put it on skip, and if we uh, get there, we get there. We're in a new man zoom. So this is something we cannot skip. If it's green, you can pass it. Cool. So, so, so we, 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 we did, we did it. We, we got, we got through. We win. Yeah. Ah, the, oh yeah. Okay, so it did have a story purpose. Mm -hmm. That was like a thing in the laboratory that we were like, hey, why is this not in the puzzle? Yeah. Ah. No, not all. But actually, I want to go check the uh, chart now. So, like, we are definitely. It feels like we are getting towards the end, at least. Yeah, I think we're kind of on the edge of unlocking a whole bunch of endings. Because yeah, there is these two, right? This and uh, no, this that are like mm -hmm. we need stuff to unlock. We have this, which we did unlock. We haven't touched this branch, and we need a answer there. Oh, and yeah. this. But, like, three endings that we need to unlock. A branch we haven't touched yet. 
Mm -hmm. um, the thing we're doing right now, and what seems to be a big, like, the ending. Like... Yeah. Like, that, that just seems like, yeah, we are getting to the end. Yeah. It's progress. Yeah. I'm curious to see how this game ends, because I can begin to see how the threads are coming together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I just got an achievement. Cool. What did you achieve? Uh, something about antibodies? <laughs> yeah. So, this yeah. game's premise is fun as hell. Yeah. I mean, the death game premise is, like, good. It's also fun, because I'm pretty sure at one point they actually did do, like, um... I believe it was when they were promoting either the second or third game, but I remember I think I believe at some convention or something they actually did run like a zero escape themed escape room. I mean, you kind like, of have to, like. Yeah, you can't just not do that. Like, why have a marketing budget if you're not doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like too, especially since there's already places like there's already businesses that are just like escape room places, and all you have to do like. You could just like rent one out and just kind of rebrand it and like mm -hmm. just like th throw in a f like a few things that are like ra effectively mm -hmm. random gibberish that like make it sound like they're they could be from a um, zero escape game and like there. Mm hmm. Well, I think also too, just like I feel like the ab game like as a concept like minus the death part like that that you can leave that out but like the rest of it does seem like an actual thing that you could pay to do like mm -hmm. not just not just doing the escape rooms but having to do that as well mm -hmm. just like dedicate an entire escape room business to <laughs> like you and nine friends have to go through this whole thing yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like, that means that you and your friends can do it, you know, different ways, which would probably be good for a business because repeat customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come betray your friends. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who would like that. I don't know, it feels like one thing, something that'd be fun to do is, like, a role-playing kind of thing, too. Mm-hmm. Because, like, if you're going to play it multiple times, might as well play it with, like, multiple different ways of thinking, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that seems like it, it could actually be, like, a solid business. Yeah. But also, it would probably take a while to get through. That. Yeah, like, how long that's the thing. Take, how long does it take a well, person here's to get the through thing. one escape room? And now yeah, like, that's four true. Times. Well, the other thing, too, though, is that, like, this game has everybody, like, take, like, 40 minutes to do everything. You could definitely condense some of that, like... Mm -hmm. You could definitely just be like, okay, you have, like, five minutes to, like, decide on your... A B decision. Like there's no reason to have it take that long. Yeah. Maybe for the escape rooms, but yeah. <laughs> Cause that's the thing with this one is there's no timeline where people fail the escape room. <laughs> like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause that's just not a conceivable option. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are just smart. Yeah, like there's no with, the, with these characters being who they are, there is no way that they would not solve them. Yeah, yeah, everyone which is, is the Which is why, like, no matter who we're with, um, everyone else always just does clear their rooms, no problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be kind of funny if there were, if it was just like, after you finish a room and it's like, characters are talking and someone's just like, God, that room was a bitch. <laughs> Well, especially since, like, in every timeline, there's going to be rooms that not everybody did, did right? Uh-huh. So just, like, imagine going through... Ah! Sorry. Uh, we have been raided. Nice. Hello. We are currently playing Virtue's Last Reward, which is the second game in the Zero Escape series. Yep. How are you doing? It's... This game is doing lots. Yeah. But yeah, we're, uh, we've played 999. Yes, we did before this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we are like 15, 16 streams into this. Yeah, I think. You've numbered them. I haven't. I can't remember how. It might. We might be up to 16. Uh, it's like sloth raid. 
It's a raid that happens really slow. But, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, thank you, little little Tristy, for following. Yeah, well, uh, think things are happening because we just got an unlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, what is happening? This usually leads to big stuff, but hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Big thing. <laughs> Here we go. But yeah. Uh. I don't know. We ran, we, we like kind of ran the course on our other topic, but we're at a point in the yeah. story where it's like, we can't just keep talking about the story. Uh, have you, hey, have you seen any anime lately? Any good anime? Have I seen any anime? Um, I've been watching Tokyo Revengers. Oh, that, that's been, yeah. That's been a good anime. I, I checked out the manga for that in like 2018. Yeah. I didn't I've think it was like, good. Thank you. You didn't think it was good? No. I don't know. Is the manga still running? Yes. Yes, okay. It's like 200 that something chapters in. Okay, yeah, I'm just like trying to figure out how to, what to expect for the end of this, of Tokyo Revengers. Because it's, it's really, it, because so far I've been enjoying it a lot. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like, like, unless the story's about to pull something like really absurd, like. I, I imagine it's just going to go for a non-committal, like, maybe we get a second season, maybe we don't kind of thing. Mm hmm Well, I mean, I think it's because, uh, from what I've been told, the anime covers, like, the first two major arcs, so I feel like we're going to get some kind of conclusion, because it's going to end at the end of, like, the second arc, or so I've been told by people who have read the manga, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting some kind of conclusion, but not, like, an actual full ending. Mm-hmm. But no, I've enjoyed it so far. Like, it, it, the boys are good. The boys are good. Yeah, I, I've i just been watching the seasonals. I've been watching this whole time. Uh, Madoka this season is very good. There was a Madoka this season? Yeah, uh, second season of Majireko. Oh, I, I, I forgot to watch the first. Really I know it existed. The, I know. Okay, here's the thing. I played the Magia Record game, and I remember really getting into the story, like to the point where I'm like, how dare they interrupt my visual novel with this gameplay stuff? Uh huh. Now, now imagine. Yeah. Now imagine it looks fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, Magia Record is so good. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know. Cause like I liked Madoka, and then I like I, I don't know. I liked Rebellion enough, and then. Yeah, I kind of fell off of it after. Like, I guess I just forgot between the time I watched the show and the time Magireco started coming out. And I think the the English server for Magireco, they took it offline. Like, they never brought it back. Yeah, just because I probably wasn't making enough money. I don't know. It feels weird, though, because they spent a lot on marketing that game in English. Yeah. Because there definitely was, like, pop-up events and stuff. I remember that and year then, at AX, people were talking about, like, Apparently, there was a bank nearby that, like, had a huge banner ad above it. Yeah, I think there was also, like, a full-on, like, themed cafe. Like, they had, like, a macaron, like, a full-on, like, macaron pop-up shop huh. that was themed around it. And like, also, they, 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 added they pushed a, it really hard. They added, like, an English-exclusive magical girl, too. Oh my god, rip to her. And, like, they eventually added her to the, to the JP server, I imagine after it went yeah. down, but like, you put in all of this, and it didn't go, it didn't work. Yeah, well, I don't know, it's weird too, because you'd think if any franchise was going to work as a gacha game overseas, it would be Madoka. Like, it's a thing enough anime likers are familiar with, but I guess that doesn't inherently yeah. make I it mean, a good gacha game. the game also shut down, and that has a, like, very rapid fandom. How is the review Starlight game still alive here? Yeah! If the fucking Simpo thought... Gear game didn't survive, <laughs> if the fucking Madoka game didn't survive, how is the Sim or how is the Riffy Starlight game still alive? Yeah! I know! Like, I mean... Wasn't there a Madoka Metroidvania? No. I don't know, was there? No. Unless, I'm gonna it was look this up Unless it was Japanese exclusive, no. Okay, I'm gonna look this up, hold on. Uh, on the on the subject of new anime, 
new Naoko Yamada Science Saru show starts in a few days. Is it only in a few days? God. Uh, did you hear about that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I haven't followed much of what else she does. Like, I know that she, like, did K-On! and a bunch of other KyoAni, sh yep. like, stuff. K-On! So, like, Ufo, uh, Koeno Katachi, um, yeah. Listen to Bluebird. And I know the fact that she wasn't doing this with KyoAni was, like, a big deal. Yeah. But I don't know anything else about the show. Uh, we don't, like, there was a trailer, but we don't actually know a lot about it right now, I think. But it's, like, it's yeah. airing in a- yeah, it's airing on the 16th. It is currently the, uh, I don't know. It's the 13th. So yeah, three days. Okay. Um, I'm not- I searched for Madoka Metroidvania. I'm not coming up with anything, at least not anything official. Like, there seems to be some, like, like, doujin fan-made stuff. But I'm not seeing any, uh, like, official thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, god. I know, I am a, I am a, a Kyoani fan. A Kyo, Kyoani Kyoani fan. fan. <laughs> Kyoani fan. Variety of sounds in that string of words. Um, <laughs> and so, like, uh, the, the last few years have been a tough time to be a Kyoani fan. Yeah. So it's kind of like, there's a lot to process with Yamato leaving. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like, I... I don't know, there's a lot to speculate about like, yeah. why and how and what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like, too, it could be a situation... It's one of those situations where I feel like people might be reading into it a bit much. Because, uh -huh. like, sometimes I feel like you can leave and just be like, well, I wanted to try working with a different team and, like, she... I don't know, she might come back. Like Yeah, yeah. I think what... I mean, like... Maybe she'll go back to Kyoni when she's done. Maybe she's just going to be mm -hmm. a freelancer. But it is kind of like... One of the things that I saw people comment on is the fact that... Uh, Kyoni is is known for being the best studio in the industry. In terms of mm -hmm. like, how they treat Working workers, conditions and... how they pay, all of that stuff. And... Um, Science Saru is not... Science Saru has been at the center of controversy lately for their poor working conditions. What else has Science Saru made? I know they did uh, Azoken and... But that's yeah. the only one that comes to Devil mind. Devilman Crybaby. Uh, oh, okay. A, lo a lot of Yuasa stuff. They're basically the Okay, okay. The Yuasa. Like, the Yuasa I think place. they've done a few non-Yuasa things, but they are the Yuasa studio. Mm. But he retired, so it's like... It's not the Yuasa studio anymore. Yeah. But... But the fact that, like, this this notable director is coming from this studio with the best working conditions in the industry to one who is actively under fire for their horrible working conditions is kind of like... Why? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. may, like that working conditions are outside of the control of a specific director. Mm -hmm. But, and it's like, if she wants to work somewhere that'll give her different creative freedom, like, Science Art is probably a good place to go, but it is kind of like... I hope this isn't a bad sign for what's going on in Kiwani right now. Yeah. I, I hope this isn't, like, the canary uh, in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember there was a cool free Shin Megami Tensei Metroidvania made to promote Strange Journey remake, and it got deleted after, like, a year. Oof, yeah. Again, I'm not, like, much of a Metroidvania person, so I don't, like, follow that kind of thing closely, but, like, yeah, promotional games that, like, just disappear when the promotion is over, it's like, really? Did you know that there was a Mona Gatsuri video game that was made to pr promote one of the novels? Was it the gacha game? I'm rather there no. was a Mona Gatsuri gacha. There was a gacha game, it got shut down, I'm always sad. No, I'm talking about something else, and it's far more obscure. Oh, no, I don't think I heard about it. It's... It was like a 8-bit side-scroller, uh, where you play as Karen, uh, on a mountain. <laughs> made to it's made- it was made to promote one of the off-season books, where Karen goes to a mountain. <laughs> Someone in the chat says, got shut down! Got him! And the game, I think, was like five minutes long, or whatever. Yeah. But it was like... Well, I think it's like... Hmm? I remember hearing people ask, because you know how 
um, this year for the Olympics, they made like this really intricate, you know how Google's homepage will have like a game? Mm. Like sometimes, um, but the one they made for the Olympics was really intricate. Like it had like full on animated sequences. There was like several mini games in it. Like I tuned out everything that was happening with the Olympics because yeah, it was like really it was this year. yeah. But no, the Google Doodle was basically straight up like a small video game. Like someone people were like, is there a way to preserve this somehow? Like can we port this to the Nintendo Switch or something? Because this is just, like, there was so much work put into it. It was basically just its own video game. Like, mm -hmm. but it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know if we're ever going to see it again because, you know, once the Olympics are done, Google it's not going to show up on the Google homepage anymore. I mean, so. there, is, there is a new Olympics happening in, like, four months. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if they're going to, it's not like a thing that they bring back every single time. Like at that point, they just make a new one. Because this one, I think, also featured like the Olympic mascots, whatever they were. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, you know what? I'm kind of sad about now. Olympic mascots just get no recognition anymore. Maybe it's just because I don't follow the Olympics. I but I remember never when I was followed the Olympics. Yeah. I I only learned about that. I only learned that Olympic mascots are a thing recently because one of the one of the people from Lur on his, like, personal YouTube channel uh, has been making videos about, like, Olympic promotion- Olympics promotional materials. So far mm -hmm. he's done uh, Olympics logos and Paralympics logos, and he's- and then he was like, don't worry, I will be doing one on the mascots, and I'm like, wait, the Olympics has mascots? Yeah, every Olympics has mascots. Um, I didn't know that. Some of them just had better ones than others, and some of them make a bigger deal out of them than others. But no, I remember, um, the year that the Olympics were in Vancouver, the mascots I remember were on like everything. Like I think I had friends who had like shirts with the mascots on them and they had like all sorts of like Olympic mascot merch. And then I just, maybe it's just because it was our country. So maybe they make a bigger deal of it here. Probably. But I don't remember seeing many mascots for other games after that. So I don't know if it's just other countries were worse at designing their mascots and maybe ours were just better, but mm -hmm. yeah. I I'm gonna could look not it tell up. you because I could not I could not for the life of me name a single uh Olympic mascot. No, I don't remember any of their names, but I kinda remember what they look like. Like I remember the general art style. Yeah, for me it's like I I remember watching like t uh like two thousand four, two thousand eight, uh two thousand ten and uh no, I, I think I might have memories of 2006, too. Mm -hmm. uh, people make a, okay. people make much less fuss about the Winter Olympics, though. But it's like, I remember them up, and I think, like, 2012 would, would have been the last one I, like, would have been the last one that I watched with my family, so it would have been the last one I gave a shit about. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm looking at the mascots from the 2010 games, and no, I think they were deservedly popular. They were pretty cute. They're very plushyable. Um, okay. Hold on, I'm gonna look up, uh... 20, 20, Olympic, Olympics mascot. What did they look like? Eh, ours were better. <laughs> um, I mean, these guys aren't bad. You know what they look like? Okay, there's six of them. Two of them kind of look like they belong in a Sonic game. Um, I don't know, they're... I don't know. These are fine. Me, who they has look very, no idea what you're talking about. They look very video about, game. Trying to <laughs> they imagine, look very... trying to imagine what an Olympics mascot that would be a Sonic character looks like. I don't know. I, I can send you pictures after. Um, they're pretty cute. Uh -huh. I can. I would definitely buy plushies of these as well. I think. But I don't know. I think ours were cuter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm gonna look, go back and look at. Hold on. Uh, what were the Seoul Olympic? But yeah, uh, oh, Olympics. Uh, on, on, on we in chat knows and appreciates what I'm talking about with the uh, person from Lur doing Olympics uh, stuff. I'm like legit looking forward to the um, Olympic mascots video now because I want to know what the fuck these are, and there will probably be an extensive history of that. Okay, um, Pyeongchang 2018. Oh my god, these are so. Okay, these are boring. They're boring. I'll admit it, they're boring. <laughs> hmm. Um, what are some other- what were the other ones? Because it was Tokyo, then the ones before that, that was Seoul in 2018. Sochi? 
What's Rio 2016, I think, was the one before Sochi that. was 2014, I remember that from the videos. Yeah, Rio 2016. These are, these are, these are pretty good. I like the little tree guy. There's a tree guy and there's like this like wildcat guy. Um, I like the tree guy better. <laughs> um, what else we got? Sochi uh, 2014. Um, okay, Sochi 2014. Mm, mm, mm. These look like Pixar characters. They honestly look like Pixar characters. <laughs> um, Sochi 2014 mascots look like Pixar characters. That remarkably like it, gives me nothing to work on. I know, hold on. If I can send you pictures of these after, you'll understand. They look like Pixar characters, and they don't look easy to draw. That's the thing. A lot of the other Olympic games have gone for like a very simple art style of just like very, either thick line kind of things or like very, you know, simple borderless shapes. But no, these ones, they're just like, no, we're making a DreamWorks movie. Hmm. Um, we already did 2010, 2012 Olympics. What were they again? Uh, Olympics uh, mascot. There was this was uh, this was London, twenty twelve, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Funny looking. All I know about uh, from from the uh, logo videos, the 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 London logo. You should look up the London logo. Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right now. It is. It's uh. Not great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I realize it's supposed to be the year, but I wouldn't have realized that if, like, no one told well, me. It, um, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to look like 2012. Like, 2012. Wow, that's awful. I know. Um, these mascots, uh, they're like these, like, cyclops blobs. They don't look particularly athletic. Um, they don't look particularly British, either. Hmm. Okay, so 2010 I already looked up. Fuck what was the you, ones before uh, 2008 Olympics mascot? Betraying Alice is always the right option. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so this was the Beijing Olympics. Oh, these guys are cute. I like these guys. I like the little panda. I like how everyone there w betrays someone else. Like, <laughs> we are all terrible people. <laughs> this is the timeline where we all hate each other. <laughs> 2006 Olympics mascot. So 2006. Oh, these guys are funny looking. I kind of like them though. They're funny looking in a good way. The British one was funny looking in a bad way, but uh, 2006 mascots. <laughs> ah. There she is. She's standing there. I still think betraying her was the right option. Like, something's clearly going on, but, like. <laughs> but like I want to yeah. check I, I want to check if I made the right choice or not <laughs> probably not because she would betray us either way and if we allied with her we would go to negative one so we would just die on the spot so betraying her was the right option but yeah I know I I don't really care much about sports, so the Olympics aren't really something I care about much. Yeah. Also, they're kind of, like, they are kind of abhorrent from an ethical standpoint. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, like, I feel like it's a thing that I was real like, it was fun as a kid because it was one of those things that, like, everybody was watching and, like, sometimes, like, you know, if you're at school and there's, like, a game of something going and sometimes the teacher would turn it on. But it was kind of, yeah, it was very much just, like, once I got older and I was no longer, like, talking to people who are interested in sports and I was no not really interested in sports myself, then, I, I don't know, the novelty just kind of wore off. Yeah. Also, I think the other thing is, like, I feel like they kind of shot themselves in the foot in terms of uh, streaming rights. Because I know before, um, when people used to watch TV, they would, you know, license the games to specific TV channels, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason, they just never bothered to do that for the internet. So you'd run into things where it's like, there weren't really, like, you can't watch the games on YouTube, and you also can't really repost clips of the games on social media. Okay, I, so it's one of those things where it's like their own website. 
Yeah, but like I remember seeing people trying to post clips of like, oh, hey, this really cool thing happened during this game of this, and then the clips gets taken down for like copyright violations, and it's like, I feel like they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot there because like, how can we talk about the games if we can't actually like show the games like? Mm-hmm. Especially since, like, people aren't really watching TV anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what were the 2004 Athens Olympic mascots like? Yeah, but, like, I don't know, I just, like, I struggle to care about sports anime. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, actual sports aren't gonna catch my interest. Like, I know- Yeah. When it comes to sports anime, there are, like, there are certain kinds that I can, like, get really into. When it's, like, when it's, like, graded sports, I think I'm more into it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like watching stuff like, you know, synchronized swimming or figure skating. It's kind of, like, that artistic angle to it. Yeah, but... or Yuri on Ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, you expect me to watch athletics, and they're not even pretty anime boys. It's just like, maybe, maybe it's just because I'm a creative type of person as opposed to athletic, but it's like... Mm hmm I would definitely prefer to, like... To watch someone try to figure out how they can make themselves come across better, rather than like, I need to just train a bunch. If I just train yeah. a bunch, I'll get better. And I also, mm -hmm. I, think, I think, like, the fact that graded sports are more likely to have an in individual focus helps. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I can more easily care about a small cast than a large cast. So if you have a mm -hmm. whole, if you have a whole team of sports boys, then it's like, eh. But if you have like one individual sports boy, yeah. it's easier to follow. Or, or, or even, I don't know, I... even, even two gay sports boys. <laughs> the ideal. And when's the Yuri on Ice maybe gonna come out? Oh, right, that was a thing. That just disappeared into the ether. It's been four years! Give them a taste! <laughs> you are losing money every every day you spend not releasing this thing. <laughs> like, I'm sure it's go I'm sure it's going to look good when it's finally out. Wait, Yuri on Ice was MAPPA, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. MAPPA sucks. Didn't they, like, take a season of Attack on Titan? Not necessarily because they wanted to, but because literally nobody- Like, the production schedule was so absurd that literally nobody else was going to take it. Yeah, it's like, they're the only people who are willing to abuse their workers that much. Even for the industry, they take it a step further. <laughs> um, and it's just kind of like, they- they suck, and also they take about a million projects a, se uh, a season. Yeah. Well, wasn't it too, I think, because I remember there was, there was some MAPPA projects where, like, they put their name on it, but, like, it's not really MAPPA. Like, I think Sada Zanmai was like that. Like, it was mostly Ikuhara's studio, and then MAPPA was just kind of... Ma MAPPA were, like, they weren't the creative force, they were the, uh, the, the like... Yeah, they were just the grunt work, kind of. But, but, like, I'm pretty sure MAPPA worked with a lot of freelancers anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I think Punchline, like, um, Uchikoshi's anime, like, Punchline, that was MAPPA. Mm-hmm. Um... Cause yeah, like... I like things from MAPPA, just not- maybe not the studio itself. Yeah, like, I like Yuri on Ice, I like- I like Zombieland Saga! I- I personally don't care for Zombieland Saga, but I get that it's a good thing. I like parts of Rage of Bahamut. Rage of Bahamut yeah. had very good openings and endings. Uh, what else from MAPPA have I liked? Well, I'm gonna look up a list of what they've done. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same because I have my phone and can do that! Woo! Oh, wait, hold on. Uh... Studio MAPPA... Anime list. So... Okay, Mal, yeah. tell me, tell me. So, Rage of Bahamut, what I liked. Oh, they did Jujutsu Kaisen, but I guess that's really recent. Yuri on Ice, um, I liked. Kakegurui was apparently them. I liked Banana uh, Fish. Yeah, I should finish Banana Fish. Um, Zombieland Saga, we talked about already. 
Um. Da, 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 punchline we talked about already. They made eight uh, shows last year. Holy shit. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Sada's on mine we talked about already. Yuri on Ice we talked about already. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, apparently, apparently, the Yuri on Ice movie still doesn't have a release date. Right. Well, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Wasn't it originally going to be, like, a roadshow thing? Like, weren't they going to, like, do it as, like, a limited time thing and then do a release later and then COVID just kind of came by and killed that plan? Possibly? That's what I remember. Because I remember hearing in 2019 there was, like, a trailer and it said roadshow. But I don't know what happened after that. Mm-hmm. I... I know. I'm... Uh, trying to see if the Wikipedia page even talks about the movie that much. <laughs> I don't know. There's not much to say. Like, we got a trailer, and the trailer looked pretty, but we don't know anything else. The film was originally scheduled to be released in 2019, but it has been delayed to another currently unknown release date. Okay, so I'm guessing maybe it was, like, supposed to be 2019, then it got delayed, and then COVID. Yeah, but, like... Ava came out in the, came out this year despite COVID. Yeah, but didn't that take like even longer? Like, weren't they at that for like thirteen years or something? Yes, but it was like active. It was actively in production um, when COVID happened. So it's like, mm. and it did get delayed once because of that. Like, it was supposed to come out multiple times during the pandemic, and it got pushed back. So yeah, I mean, I feel like if it was supposed to come out in 2020, then chances are it was probably already, like, in some state of doneness. Yeah. Like... Uh, and, like, the, the delay might have also been because theaters weren't safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I know some TV anime also got... I don't know, I guess the thing with anime is I feel like... Anime was kind of... Maybe not safe from the pandemic, but you can get your animators to work from home if they have the right computers and equipment and stuff. You can't really do that for a live action film set. Like, yeah. the live action film set, people kind of need to be there, but anime, it might be slower, but you can do like a work from home anime yeah. setup, probably. Uh, MAPPA wouldn't care that much about the pandemic considering their eight shows from 2020. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Clearly, it didn't affect them that much. Mm-hmm. Um, or else they wouldn't have, like... They wouldn't have had their most productive year ever. If they weren't capable of dealing with that. I imagine, like, what the Beauty and Ice movie is doing is that, like... Somewhere in the creative process, it has stalled. That's where the problem mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Jen made Star Wars Episode Four disagrees with you. What was the story for that? I, I don't follow Star Wars things. I don't know a single thing about any Star War. I also don't know what that was, like, responding to. Yeah. I don't know how far back my we, chat we is We have said a lot of things. Yeah, we are, we are moving at speeds incomprehensible to Twitch chat. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, there was a point, though. I think, like, spring of 2020, when things first started closing, there was definitely a time where, like, there was, like, three anime airing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you for following No Name Paladin. Yeah, there was definitely, like, a moment there like, where... Freak Year stopped airing for a bit. Yeah, basically everything except for, like, Kaguya-sama and Bakarina and a few other things basically just, like, stopped. Yeah, because it's just, like, they needed to adjust to the new workflow. And even mm -hmm. if they're, like, even if they were timely and said, like, everyone go home right now... They still need to, like, adjust their process to this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in response to live actors staying at home. It's basically a video where every scene is a different homemade video. It's beautifully horrid. Oh my god, that sounds kind that of sounds, nice, actually. That sounds interesting. I kind of want to see that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I know there was definitely, like, issues, um... It's like the full Star Wars Episode 4 of homemade videos. Because, <laughs> I mean, I know uh, there was also issues with um, voice acting, like uh, Funimation simuldubs. A whole bunch of them got put on hold because 
some voice actors have home studios where they can record things because some of them you know they have it to do auditions and stuff mm -hmm. but not all of them did so like trying to set things up so that took a little while and also especially since and like if like you needed to buy equipment for home like shipping wasn't happening and there's also just a thing about like uh words um so sometimes like sometimes there needs to be all of the actors in the studio to really get Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, for dubs, typically that doesn't happen just because of scheduling and stuff. And also the fact that all the like all the dialogue is kind of already written. Like, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's the case for like, you know, regular voice acting too. But like for dubbing especially, because the lines are already kind of set in stone in terms of like timing and stuff, typically the voice actors like aren't in the studio all together at the same time. Mm -hmm. Or at least it's very rare, like only certain dubs will do that. But yeah, I think, yeah, Simul Dubs definitely got kind of set back. Yeah, I... Not that like, there was a lot of anime running that season to begin with. I, I don't know how much, like, it was a thing in Japan, but I do know that, like, some voice actresses got COVID. So it's like, clearly, mm -hmm. they weren't exactly isolating well. Yeah, yeah. Like, fucking Moyo got COVID, and... My timeline was freaking out. <laughs> people were people were going through like the the stages of grief, like speed running it, like just in case the worst happened. She got through it fine, like mm -hmm. it, it, it I, I, like after like there was the news that she had COVID, and then two weeks later there was the new news that she didn't have COVID, and then that was kind of it. But it was still like yeah, yeah. It, it, that was still a sign that, like, voice actresses weren't quite getting, um... Or weren't quite having good conditions, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The best is when it sounds like the voice actors didn't get any directions for their lines, they only got lines. Yeah, I think that was a learning curve for some people, too, was, like, not just acting in isolation, but also directing in isolation, because they would, you know, do the thing where it's like, you know be connected over Skype or something with a director and then they send you directions. But yeah, there was definitely things like that. And also the fact like things when you're recording at home, there are things that you can't really account for. Like in a studio, you're probably like already inside a building and there's tons of soundproofing. And like but when you're at home, if there's constructions going on outside, yeah, you can soundproof your room, but like you can only do so much in a house, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's probably even more so in Japan, where, like, people are already living in smaller houses, so... And, and also just, like, like big, like, uh, very, very tight cities, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're in, like, an apartment building, like, <laughs> there's only so much you can do. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I keep thinking about that, too, for, like, how, um... Even stuff like Hololive, like when they do like the 3D streams, they can't really do that from home, not just because of all the equipment and setup, but also just because I don't know how many of them would live in houses big enough for it to be able to be set up properly. Because even like basic VR stuff, like VR chat stuff, you still need a fair amount of space for that. At least to be able to move comfortably. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because, yeah, even I see other VTubers who do, like, full body tracking, and, like, apparently in order to set that up properly, you there is, like, a minimum amount of space you need. Otherwise, it's just not going to track very well. Hmm. But that's also why a lot of, like, because typically I think there is a timeline for, like, at what point Hololive people typically get their 3D model after they debut. But that's why, like, Hollow Yen and Hollow Indonesia, like, none of them have gotten 3D debuts yet, at least not official ones. Um, just because it's not a question of whether or not the models are ready. It's just like, when can they safely and easily and legally get into Japan? <laughs> because they don't have any, like, they don't have any of the facilities overseas to do, to like, do any of the 3D stuff. So that's how you get, like, Halloween first anniversary happening in VR chat, which was very cute, but also like kind of a productive circumstance. Was. 
Yeah, basically, yeah, they had, um, because, okay, uh, Amelia Watson had been doing some VR streams, like, she'd been playing some VR games, so she had figured out how to do the setup for, like, you know, getting the little chibi 3D model. So that was kind of a soft, a soft 3D debut, because that was the best they could probably get. Um, so yeah, they decided to do the first anniversary in VR chat. Uh, so yeah, that was really, like, there was, it was a fun time. Uh, but yeah, again, that was kind of a product of circumstance, because they can't really, like, maybe Callie could maybe get hers cause, since she lives in Japan, but, like, you know, Kiara's in Europe, everyone else I think is in North America somewhere. They can't re exactly get into Japan easily. It, it, yeah, like... Yeah, so that's how they, that's how it happened. Um, I think also the Indonesia branch are also having the same issue. Um, they announced... That's the thing, they announced a while back, they're like, we're getting 3D debuts sometime this year, maybe. Um, again, the problem I think is just, I, I honestly have a feeling that they probably already have the models made and ready to go. They're just waiting for, you know, travel to be safe again. Uh huh. So, because I don't think there's, they don't have enough Indonesia talents to warrant opening anything there. Like to have like a full on office, I guess. So. And with the, yep. with the English team, if one of them is already in Japan, then, like, mm -hmm. it's not worth setting up uh, in the U.S. when, like... Mm -hmm. when it's, oh, especially since the U.S. is, is big. Like, yeah, you can also, have... En English is, is a language spoken in many places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you're not going to set up a, 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 a U.S. office or a U.K. office or an Australia office. Yeah, if it's just for, like, two people. Because, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, even then, the U.S. is big. Like, Japan is smaller. Like, you can set up an office in Tokyo, and everybody in other cities can still, like, you know, they might need to take a weekend to do it. Like, but they can still get there within, like, a reasonable amount of time. But, no, U.S. is giant. So, like, if you put your office in, like one coast chances are like what do you do if the person lives on the other coast they still have to like get on a plane to go there like it's not any mm -hmm. it's not that much closer if they have to take a plane to get there like might as well just send them to japan like mm -hmm. yeah i don't know much about whole alive so i'm just kind of like uh-huh uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah because i don't know exactly what parts of like but yeah, no, I know they're definitely, like, especially the English branches, like, scattered all over the globe. I think out of the new generation, like, one at least one of them is on Australia. Um, I think one of them's in Canada? Probably more of them are in the U.S. Again, English is scattered. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, it's this room. But then again, they figured out for Hachima. Hachima was in Australia for a while. And I guess they huh. figured that out, so... Yeah. I wasn't actually aware that Hololive used 3D models. Yeah, they do, um... They don't do it as much as they used to, just because COVID made it a little more difficult. Um, but yeah, no, they usually... Yeah, they do, uh, 3D, like, streams with 3D models every once in a while. Um, they usually make it as kind of like an event thing, uh... Since again, like they can't do it very often, but yeah, I think all of all of Gen Five have had theirs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just they need a specific like studio to do it, like because it needs like a specific setup. Apparently, at one point, Coco asked like if there was a way to set it up at home, and they're like, "No, that'd be too expensive and also takes up a lot of space." So, but I know that some of them too have what they call like home three D. I think like. Um, I believe Coco had it, uh, I think Miko might have one as well, uh, and it's kind of what it sounds like, it's basically like, bust up 3D models, um, kind of similar to what other VTubers on, like, indie VTubers might use, uh, where it's, it's a 3D model, but it's just kind of like the face and head, it's just like a nice alternative to the live 2D if they feel like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have said this probably a lot at this point, but I just, I don't watch Hololive, so I don't know Hololive, like, mm -hmm. the most I have watched 
of any of them is that, like, for research, I watched their debuts. And also, one time I tuned into an Ina stream, because mm -hmm. if I had to pick a whole alive, I would pick her. Ina. Because she has easily the best design. Yeah, I like- And she seems chill. I should probably rewatch debut streams, <laughs> just because, like, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do one eventually. Yeah, I just, and like, I need to remember how this goes. Before my debut, I just went through and, like, pulled up a whole bunch of, uh, debuts. Like, not just, mm -hmm. uh, Whole Alive, but also, like, indies, and was like, what should I do for my debut? Cool. Yeah, Here's just, like, kind of get a feel for the format. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, no. I just don't watch streamers. Like, I don't, I don't have too much bitterness against Holo Life. Um, I do have some because why are they popular and not me? Uh, but you know, I I try to not hold that against them too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think for me too, it's just um. It's nice to enjoy a popular thing sometimes. <laughs> I... That is a very different attitude from mine. <laughs> I don't know, I think the thing is, is like... Because so many of the things that I've gotten really into have always been like... Not super niche things, but they're niche enough that like, if I'm with a group of friends, there probably isn't anybody who's seen Utena. Or like, probably isn't that many people who have played Zero Escape. Or like... But, like, mm -hmm. Hololive Live is, like, a popular thing, and if I run into someone and, like, it comes up in a conversation, they're at least gonna know what I'm talking about, right? I... I revel in the obscure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I... I don't know. I used to be like, oh, yes, I, I only... I'm only interested in old anime or obscure anime, and then I realized that actually that wasn't that fun for me, because then you can't really talk to anybody else about it. Like... Or you always, like, I don't know, I guess I, I just, I didn't like coming off as pretentious. Oh, yeah, no, see, I love coming <laughs> off as pretentious. <laughs> so, I don't mind uh, talking to, to people who don't know what I'm talking about. Like, yes, mm -hmm. here is this, like, mediocre anime that no one remembers that I will sing the fucking praises of. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I don't know, for me, I guess it's just like, Sometimes I can't always explain why I like the things I like, so I probably shouldn't, like, nobody else owes me an explanation of why they like the things they like either. Like, sometimes I just like Utena, and some people can just like Hirawaka, or just like Hololive, or just like Jujutsu Kaisen, or whatever it is the kids are watching these days. Like, sometimes, I don't know, you just like things, and yeah, I'm not gonna, like, act like my tastes are better. It's all about finding people who you can be pretentious around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like my, my friends are all, like, maybe not always as pretentious as me, but they exist in a similar area that, like, I can just go off about shit and they will not be lost. Mm -hmm. It definitely helps that, like, I know a lot of, the, like, theory nerds. Yeah. I think for me, too, it's also just, like, there are a lot of things that are popular that just never grabbed me. Mm -hmm. Like, most shonen stuff, fate. So, fate I think that's cool. the other thing, is, yeah, like, liking Hololive. Fate's a weird Hololive. place, I think. Where yeah. It's like, fate is simultaneously super obscure because it is incredibly opaque, but it's also really popular. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, if you say you like fate, like, people are going to know what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, like, they're not gonna know fate. Yeah, yeah. And, and especially if you're like, oh yes, Fate Strange Fake is my favorite uh, installment of the Fate franchise. But I and also- people are like, what's that? I also <laughs> like Fate Type Redline and Fate Extra. And it's like- Okay, you definitely made some of those up. I made none of those up. <laughs> I also uh, really love Fate Requiem. And, uh... <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of obscure Fate installments, even among Fate fans. Like, Fate yeah. Koha Ace. No one knows Fate Koha Ace. I, like... 
it barely once again i'm convinced you're making like half of these up <laughs> i think yeah i don't know i think it's just because so many things that are popular with other people just don't grab me so when there's something that is popular and also is grabbing me i'm like yes yes i am part of of a bigger entity here i guess it's just like uh, popularity is relative like no mm-hmm. one's gonna say arc knights is popular but like at the same time mm-hmm. arc knights is probably the most f- popular thing that i am currently into yeah well i don't know i feel like it's also too like popular with a certain crowd like mm-hmm. Sometimes there are anime that everybody I know is talking about, and then I go to a convention and I see absolutely zero people cosplaying it. And it's like, yeah, it turns out this is maybe just very popular with, like, the small selection of people I talk to, but maybe not on a large scale. Mm Mm-hmm. And then again, there's also things that I go to a convention and I see everybody cosplaying, and I'm like, what? I don't know a single person who watched this show. How are you all cosplaying the same waifu here? Yeah. And then there's and then there's the rare times that everything like converges in the right way. Mm-hmm, Did you mm-hmm. go to many conventions in uh, in 2017 or 20, 2017 or 2018? Uh 2018 was when I, when I first started going regularly. Do you, how many fucking Haseki no Kuni cosplayers were there? Oh yeah, so many. <laughs> so many. Um infinite like, amounts of rems and rams. <laughs> I also started going to conventions right around the time that Darling and the Franks was airing. Uh, so everybody was zero to. Uh, everybody. I I I remember um I went to a convention shortly after um Gridman aired. And you had so many people uh cosplaying uh the what's her name? Rika. Rika, yeah. Mhm. I think um who are the other ones? Uh, there was a lot of Pop Team Epic, um, but that's because that's an easy cosplay. Yeah, All you need is, so. like, a school uniform and a friend who's taller than you. Um, I just remember seeing, like, really the most time, the, the time I've seen the most people, like, the most of any specific cosplay inundated was Hoseki no Kuni. Yeah, for me, I think it was ReZero. <laughs> yeah, may- maybe that's just because I am a Hoseki no Kuni fan, so I was like, I was just seeing all of these different people, and I was like, oh my god, like, wow. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously there's a lot of Hirawaka, but that goes without saying. That's like, that's that's a given, that's that's not... That's just perpetually popular at this point. Or what else? There was Hirawaka, there was, um... I mean, there's always a lot of Miku, that's that's also a given. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It kind of comes and goes. A lot of Love Live. Yeah. That's a given. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's just things that are going to be popular to cosplay forever, regardless of how popular the source material is. Mm-hmm. Some designs are just like, fun for people to dress up as. Yeah, yeah. I think Persona 5, that was another one that, like, I don't know how many cosplayers, like, I don't know if everybody who cosplayed Persona 5 actually played it, but, like, they're very cool and recognizable character designs, Persona regardless 5 of... was popular. I think it's fair yeah, to say yeah. that if someone was cosplaying it, they played it, just because so many people played it. Yeah. I don't know. I think, yeah, Persona 5 was another case of me seeing, like, something that's popular, and I'm like, yes, I enjoy this as well. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, no. Like, you know what's odd? Monogatari what? is a very popular series. It's, like, high, highly rated on Mal. It's sold incredibly well. Everyone knows mm-hmm. it. How many Monogatari cosplayers have you seen? I've seen me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've cosplayed Monogatari before. Uh-huh. Um, and then I went to a convention. I went one year. I did. Uh, I cosplayed Ogi. Um, and then I went and uh, I don't know. Usually I see two or three per convention. Like I think the year that I was Ogi, on that same weekend I saw, I think I saw a um, Hachikuji. Um, You've I think definitely I definitely s- seen more than me. I have seen an Ogi and a Senjo Gahara. Was the Ogi me or was there like a separate Ogi? No, I mean like in person. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think uh, I haven't seen a lot of Senjo Gahara. I've seen a lot of like, not a lot, but like Hanikawa. Um, I feel like she's more popular. I feel like Senjo Gahara is like one of those ones that's just kind of like a wig and the uniform and there's not that much else to it. Yeah, but I think. Whereas- like- yeah. That would the, the fact that it's a simple cosplay would make it something that like people who like the series would do. Just mm-hmm. because it's like you can just 
you can just pretty easily do that as opposed to something that's with more effort. Although I think like Oogie. most of Oogie, I, think, Oogie. I think most of um most of the designs are fairly simple. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it is just a lot of it is like wig or like like hair plus uniform. If you yeah want. yeah, and you know they have Oogie, different out- they have different outfits if you want, but yeah, you don't need to do that. And in fact, if you do that, you'll probably be less recognizable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Oshino Eggy. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I guess Hachikuji is, like, the most recognizable one, I think, because she's the yeah. only one that's not really in a uniform. Like, she has the big backpack, and she yeah, has, like, the backpack is, like, very thing. Oh, yeah, I have seen a Hachikuji cosplayer. Yeah, yeah. So that's three. Uh, and I'm it's trying like... to think what else. Nobody cosplays Araragi, because Araragi is boring aesthetically uh-huh and no one he's just a guy i uh, no i okay four i've seen a yotsugi cosplayer oh yeah 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 i think i saw one too i took a picture with one i think there's a picture of me somewhere dressed as ogi with a uh yeah yotsugi cosplayer but like is anyone going to cosplay like gaian or K- kagenui or like yeah they're just like a lot of the designs are just like some guy or some girl Mm-hmm. I guess like, Kaiki Kaiki could work if you have like the vibe for it, but other than that, he's just like a tall guy in a suit. Mm-hmm. I mean, like walk around with a jar that has a life be in it. <laughs> I'm sure that would go over great with the staff. Yeah, yeah. It's like, does this need to go to weapons check? Uh... <laughs> I'm sure they would not let you in. <laughs> but yeah, no, because I mean, to be fair, I feel like guy in suit isn't inherently a bad character co- to cosplay. Because I know I have seen a really, really good uh, Reagan cosplay. But yeah, again, it's just kind of all about vibes. I think um, there was a Reagan cosplay I saw one year. Um, he was there with like a friend who was dressed as Mob. Um, they had like a balloon they painted, like a helium balloon nice. that they was green, yeah, and they yeah. painted it look like Dimple. Um, but he also, like, set up, outside the dealer's hall, he just set up, like, this, like, small table and stool for him to sit on, and he just, like, set up a sign that says spirits and such consulting. Um, and then if somebody came by and asked him about stuff, he would, like, throw salt at them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think uh, that was, it was good. But, like, I don't know, he was a very, like, he had the vibes to be Reagan, I guess. The mm-hmm. guy who was cosplaying Reagan, like, uh, yeah. yeah, like just the way he was moving, like the way he was posing for pictures, like he was owning it. I'm surprised that Skihi isn't a popular cosplay character. I mean, I guess I think it's just because she's not in it much, aside from like the one scene everybody remembers. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, she has a distinctive design, and yeah, also, yeah, which is and also thing. you can do the dance. That's true. That's true. Like, That's a good point. Like, wear, wear a yukata and do the dance, and people are gonna take your picture. <laughs> um, and I like Karen has a lot less going for her because um, but because it's just a tracksuit. I mm-hmm. mean, you could you could wear the outfit from that scene. Good. And just carry around a toothbrush. I mean, didn't somebody do that? I remember seeing like a video of something like that. I if that if that was a thing, I didn't see it. But like, I feel like that's a way to get a lot of people to be like, "Ha, huh, that's funny." Haha, it's it's that it's the thing. Yeah, it's the thing. We know the thing. Yeah, I surely someone has to have cosplayed cosplayed Sadachi at some point. Again, I feel like she's another one where it's just, like, a girl in uniform, and, like, unless you know who it is, like, mm-hmm. there's not really much else to it. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the hair is, like, more distinctive there, because, like, th- mm-hmm. there's more of it um, <laughs> than, say, like, Kambadu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kambadu does have, like, wrapping around your uh, hand. Or, like, arm. Yeah, yeah. It's not like she has nothing that stands out. But yeah, no. Mm-hmm. It's like every character has at least something. And Nautico mm-hmm. uh, has a different uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen a lot of people cosplay the, like, um, like the jacket and cap, like the Renai Circulation yeah, yeah. outfit. Um, 
which is like but her, I think it, that's her iconic outfit I think yeah I think the problem with that one though too is that it's very much not convention friendly in terms of uh, convention centers are hot and often yeah. cons are in the summer so it's often like it's baggy and like yeah and you gotta like take off the jacket at some point and at that point like the cosplay might no longer be recognizable so like it might be comfy but like it's not very convention friendly Mm-hmm. Okay. Where are we at? Because it is... I have an early morning tomorrow. Oh, no. Yeah, we should probably call it... Uh, yeah, call it soon. Or, no, but, like, if we're in the middle of something, like... Well, we... I feel like we're in the middle of a flashback. We're in a flashback, and we have no idea when it's going to end and what's going to happen on the other side. Hmm, that's we true. Have, that's we true. have been yeah. in this situation where when we said, let's just finish this, and when we're done we'll call it the day and then we were here raise, for another hour you raise a very very <laughs> good point <laughs> we should maybe not <laughs> and may maybe we should learn from our mistakes yes okay so i guess we'll call it here yeah. and not make the same mistake again uh this let is, me go find someone to raid this is Who's fun online? uh yeah uh wait fuck I, I muted the wrong channel first. Uh, bye. Goodbye.